Hello, everybody. Hope all is well. Hopefully you can hear me as I'm doing this through my camera mic. I didn't realize I could do this through my camera mic. So Hello, you can hear me as, well. as the sound check went. As I'm doing this through my... Whoa, Alan stereo sound. Anyhow, wow, you can hear me quite good. That's pretty cool. All right, well, we have... WVOGS18 in the chat. Hope all is well. We're going to do a little something different. I watch a lot of card collecting channels such as WVOGS18, our good friend Will, uh, and Danny N. Grays and Cards, Thray Cerrone, uh, Card Collectibles, and many, many more. I also watch like Comics with Bueller and Sam's Tangled Web and many, many more uh, with comic books. And I, I had some collectibles and I decided, you know what would be pretty fun? Let me go find my collectibles, you know? So, um, myself and Nurse Teresa, who just went home, uh, we went down in the cellar and we dug through all these boxes and we got some really cool collectibles that I had when I was very young. Uh, we're going to show some little, it's going to be kind of fun, I think. So, one of my favorite collectibles, and this isn't, I've shown this before, it's actually my logo, but... I bought this many moons ago. Well, not many, many moons ago, but let's see. That's Steve Grogan, New England Patriots. My, one of my all-time favorite, definitely my favorite New England Patriot. I, I like a lot of Patriots, but definitely my all-time favorite, Steve Grogan. And this is the best Patriot helmet ever. I'm trying to see how, is it higher, better, lower, tilted? Okay. So, and I wore... Number 14 in high school when I quarterback my senior year. So we're going to show you a little, a little ha-ha. Um, where is that? Let me get a good laugh out of this. Let me just, as I have my collectible, collectible boxes over here. So, again, hello, Dave Little. Check out that wonderful. And we got, here's, first of all, we have to. There's, I forgot to do that. That's Will. Check out WVOGS18. Hello. Wonderful card collecting channel and more. And our good friend, Dave Little, he had a basketball game. I'm going to have to catch that on replay. Uh, another wonderful channel in our FOC community. That's Dave Little. How's the sound? I'm doing it through the uh, camera. I didn't realize I could do that. So no headphones, uh, which is kind of cool. And some coffee. So anyway, I... Patriots fan, big Steve Grogan fan, as I just showed you the helmet. So I wore number 14 in high school. And when we were digging through collectibles, okay, I found my old high school football pictures. And I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> I got to scan these. These are kind of funny. I don't know how far they're away better. But that's me in high school, number 14. I'm going to hand the ball off. I believe that we're in an I formation. Okay. So that's me in high school. And uh, that's me after throwing the ball. Again, I don't know if you can see. Do I go like that? Do I go back? I don't know. I could throw the ball pretty good. I was not the fastest Caucasian, that's for sure. That's me trying to escape the pass rush. That will soon kill me in the next picture. So that's me. Number 14, my idol, Steve Grogan. Again, I don't know if farther away, but ah uh, yes, football Saturdays. And that's and this is me not running fast enough. As you can see, the two defenders have caught up to Al Red Sox fan and are dragging me down. I'm fighting, kicking and screaming, but you can see they're pulling the jersey off me. In this game, I do recall getting hit so hard that my helmet went this way and I was looking out of my, I actually got a concussion in this game <laughs> and bruised ribs. And this jackass, the uh, zebra threw a flag on us. I'll never forget. See things I remember. And I thought they were calling roughing the passer because you know, my was this way holding. And I, I remember telling him I would give a medal to any of my linemen who held uh, and he is going to throw another flag for uh, unsportsmanlike conduct on me. Anyway, those are some fun pictures from high school. 
And I like to think I was going to get away from them. That was my thought process. I can get around the corner. And then reality struck. I, again, I could throw the ball quite well in high school. I didn't run very fast. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. Oh, memories. Memories. So let me show you some other. And who else do we have in here? We have our good friend Bobby Cantalano. Check out her Facebook page and her YouTube channel. Lots of fun on there. Bobby Cantalano. She does some card collecting and also some uh, makes wonderful little knickknacks, as I call them. Knickknack, patty whack, give a dog a bone. Please subscribe to Bobby Cantalano. And we also have our good friend, Fanomatic. How the heck are you doing? He finds really cool. So he doesn't want to come on with me because I want to talk to him about all the cool stuff he finds with the metal detector. Check out his channel on YouTube, Fanomatic. So those are some high school football pictures. Anyway, that's why I wore number 14, Steve Grogan. All right, that was some of that stuff. We have some more cool stuff to show you. Um... 1978, yearbook, yeah, 1978 Red Sox, I can relive the misery all over again, it's beautiful, Dave Gardner, Uncle Dave Gardner, how you doing, check out that channel, he did a, t a test, a dice rolling, I gotta check, there's so many videos I have to catch up on, again, I was down in the bunker with Nurse Teresa, and we dug out all my old collectibles. Actually, there's still a gazillion more boxes down there. It's incredible. So hello, Dave Gardner, good friend in the FOC. All wonderful members we have in the FOC, friends of the channel, friends of the community. So again, 1978 yearbook, authentic, pretty good condition. I actually kept this one in good condition. Look at the TV. Look at the ad in back, Magna Box. That's what TVs used to look like, folks, all you young kids. And they, wore, and they weighed 5,000 pounds. All right, so pretty good shape. I was very impressed with this, and I didn't cut it up. as a, I used to cut everything up and make collages when I was a kid. Look at that. Freddie Lynn and Bill Soup Campbell. Now, Bill Campbell had a much better 1977 than 78. Um, Louis Tiant. So it's really in really good shape. Um, they, give, they used to give you the Red Sox schedule. Now, this came out in the beginning of the year, and it cost – at Fenway, two dollars, but I bought it at the newsstand for two twenty-five, and it gives you all the pictures. Oh, this is a beauty! I forgot this one was in here. This is my favorite: Ted Williams Teddy Ball Game. Teddy Williams, absolutely outstanding, and it gave you the training camp rosters, all kinds of cool stuff, and what I lived and died for. The TV schedule, because you didn't get every game. So they gave you the Channel 38 TV schedule, and we got some of these on Channel 69, which was uh, – Channel 38 was out of Boston. I live in western Massachusetts um, in the Springfield area. And so we would live for that. Bubba Husky, how you doing, my friend? Our good friend oh, – that's Bobby. Hello, Bobby again. Bubba. So what's going on, folks? Hope all is well, Bubba Husky. Bubba Husky. Just going through your little collectibles, a little chat, a little something different. So. And then the other thing. Uh, they were, I thought they were going to be number one that year. Which way? We got to go this way. But they finished number two in the East, breaking my heart, crushing every Red Sox fan. And this is a great picture. Dick Raddick. The beast, the monster, Dick Raditz. Again, this is in really good shape. 1978 yearbook, really good shape. I, I don't know which way to do I. Oh, I okay, I got to go more towards my uh, left. Dick Raditz, great picture. 1978 yearbook that I bought, and I, it's in wonderful shape. I was very surprised. And this is the coaching staff. With the gerbil, Don Zimmer, God rest his soul, Johnny Pesky, uh, Al Jackson, 
Walt Riniak was the hitting coach and Eddie Yost. Bernie Carbo would be traded in 78, and that's Bob Montgomery, the backup catcher. But again, really good shape. And the other thing I used to live for, oh, God, Bob Bailey. We're going to show you some baseball cards. But the other thing I used to live for, not, not only the TV schedule to know what games, but then the Red Sox, um, what they did, they got, you know, like all their little stats, but then they had the schedule here. Where's the schedule, Al? And again, this is all stuff you can get on the internet now, but you have to understand there's no internet in 1978. This is really, for me, that meant everything, that schedule, how many times, when we were going to play the Yankees and stuff. So that's 1978. Uh, pretty good condition, my yearbook. I have some, if OG's in, what, listening, I found my military strategy game uh, with um, Panzer Army Africa. Rommel in the Desert, April 1941 to 1942. We'll show that maybe later. Um, but there was something really cool. Really cool. Now, do you guys remember these? Tops sticker albums. I fell in love. Is this the first? I think this was the first one. I'll never forget when I picked this up and I flipped it over and they had all the helmets. All the helmets. I was like, that is freaking cool. So what these did, and I found some stickers. Um, bear with me a moment as I'm out of sight. Here they go. So what these did, I'll just get one. I'll get LT. What you did was you bought these little packs, and you had these stickers. Now, obviously, I didn't put this one in there. Probably is a double, but I'm not going to take it. Sticky stuff doesn't work anyway. But that's Lawrence Taylor, okay? As Tabletop Sports Delaware says, I have my 1982 album upstairs. Cool. You got to come on one of these days. We're going to, anyway, these were fun. These were, now, back in the day, and I couldn't find my football cards yet. And most of them are my brothers that hand me down. Back in the day, they did not show football helmets. Okay. So, John Hanna, an all pro, Hall of Famer, they never showed the football helmets because Tops, this is Tops, I think. I think this is Tops. Um, I don't know. I think it's a Tops card. Yes, Tops. They didn't have the rights to show the football helmet, so if there's any helmet, they used to airbrush it. Okay? I'll give you an example of that. That's why you never saw players with helmets on. Okay, I found some football cards that were mixed in with my um, baseball cards. And then it changed. So, and it changed... Around, what year is this? I don't know what year it is. 81, 82. So most football cards look like, this is Goldie, Goldie Richards, was a wide receiver for the Cowboys. Okay. And this is back in 1977. So it's a 78 card, 77, 1977 stats are on the back. And he just fell. 19, you can't see that, but no helmet. No helmet, okay? Uh, let's see who else is here. Click off that. And they would have helmets, but the emblems were smudged out. Right, uh, that's what I'm getting at. Most of the cards, no helmets. And I have, I have, ah, I got to find it. I put it, anyway, again. No helmet. So this is, football cards were not exciting to me as a kid. No helmets. I wanted to see helmets. So then it changed around 1982. They should start showing helmets. And that's, this is a, that's a good one. That's Anthony Munoz. So that's a really, and it's good condition, this card. So I was very happy about that. I have a lot of cool football cards. Um, but we're going to go through some really cool stuff. And I don't know what to lead off with. But I guess we'll start with these. So, again, these are the sticker cards. And, again, what, what got me were the helmets because you never could see the helmets. Oh, 
And you know what? You guys are going to get a laugh out of this. I didn't find the game, but I found one little electric football dude. <laughs> one little electric football dude. How much? You know, I had I had the red and yellow. And and I don't know where the game is, but I found the rules. There's actually rules. Okay. And what was awesome about this, uh, Chris from Tabletop uh, Sports Delaware, you know he's going to laugh at this. Okay, you see this guy here? I'm trying to figure out it. The kicker, quarterback guy. Okay, so this game came with like these little foam footballs, like really dinky. And the one thing that really worked well in this game was the kicker. I need a pen or something. The kicker. You you put the little ball down. You 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 hit the thing and the kick. You know, boop, and hit the ball. And you, we must have lost those things in thirty five seconds, never to be seen again. Uh, but it's really funny. And they, they they give you the diagram. But what also what I used to love about this, my friend had the the better game. And it, I remember reading this thing over and over again as a kid because I wanted them to turn in the right direction. Never did. They never turned in the right direction. They go all over the freaking place. And again, that's why I, I knew Chris would get a kick out of this. He said, oh my gosh, I never used those stupid foam balls. I just used the quarterbacks you could get from the wishbone. <laughs> it was hilarious, man. But what was really cool, we're going to leave Chris's comment. Rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Bubba Husky says, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Keith Jackson. And Chris, it's an awesome pro But the game's down there somewhere. I have no clue. I'm going to try to find it. Maybe it's not there. I think it's there. I, hell, I found the rules. Um, but what always fascinated me, and then this is the order sheet where you could order the NFL teams. The, the uh, Okay. And, again, we're using uh, Steam Yard. And it's free right now. All right. So it's kind of fun to use. But this was cool to me. Those are the real. Again, I had the generic, which I was happy with. I used to pretend it was a Chiefs. I had red and yellow. I used to pretend it was the Chiefs and the Packers, Super Bowl one. And then they had these. And you can find on YouTube people who actually still, they make stadiums. It's unbelievable. So listen for the... Mad Hornet. Listen for the Mad Hornet. <laughs> okay. And let's click that. W Vogs 18 says, Al Red, Sox, Al, Al Red Sox fan, I want to send you a fan. No, 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 no. I don't want anyone's cards. That's not what this point is. I, thank you. I don't want anybody's cards. I'm just reliving some happy memories. Because I'm old and I want to be, life's too short to be miserable. So, but Baboski says, get a nylon stadium and an orange and white set, LOL. Ah, uh, Tennessee balls. And then our good friend from the depths, the great white shark himself, the Cubs, the Bears. They made an electric basketball game also. You could play for hours without scoring. All 10 players completely uncontrollable. Oh, my God. That is so cool. I didn't know that. Again, the Cubs, the Bears, they made an electric basketball. How did you score? Did you, like, stop it and the guy? Because what you did in the electric football game, again, I don't know. This is a different chat with Al because no one ever wants to come on and chat with me. So, but, oh, you can't see that because the Cubs. Hold on. Let me bring that down. So you'd set these little guys up. Right? They go, Brr, they move. They never moved, you know, where you wanted them. They just freaking, and again, I'm not joking. There's a diagram in here to say, like, how to turn them, how to set them up, how to kick. That shit never worked. <laughs> but we'd sit there and you'd stop the board and then you'd get your little, the little quarterback guy and you'd try to push it back. And if you hit the guy, it means he caught it. And then you had to pick the ball up and, and stick it under his little arm. And then you could start again. 
I mean, we'd end up playing for like 45 minutes and maybe, you know, back and forth and you get sick of it. Not sick. It was just, it was fun. We did, Then we just went up. So again, that's a lot of fun. And that's electric football. If I find the thing, I will. Uh, but this is cool. Again, the painting is, it's not the best, but you know, it would look at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is pretty cool. Good. Uh, anyway, I don't know how well you see it. Uh, this was cool. I remember, look how cool these games were. I wanted this, uh, I wanted, god damn it, because it's backwards. Uh, I wanted this one. Now this one was a spinner. That one was a spinner. But here's the other cool thing. This is not Mattel. I did not remember this game. It looks very similar to Mattel. Look at that. Look at that. NFL, new NFL deluxe electric football. Purple or blue. I had a green one and a bait, uh, white one. The white one you couldn't pass, and the, and the green one, uh, tabletop. Um, uh, Della would tell you, I guarantee, as a kid, we were talking about before, we played the crap out of that. Uh, so, but I, I never saw, I never saw one like this. Anyway, that's that. That's electric football. All right, back to some of my things I collected as a child. I got some really cool boxing memorabilia. That's when I collected a little older, but that'll be for another day. So these are the sticker books. Again, this is why I know I keep saying it, but look how, man, Pat the Patriot, the best helmet ever. I hate the crappy Patriots helmet now. Now here's what's funny. What do you notice? What do you notice? They washed, okay? But yet, down here, they didn't. Because they're still... That's an old football card, and it, it has the emblem washed. So what these were, and they had some cool things here. I, I had bad luck. I had lots of doubles. Okay, this was the All-Pro set. Um, Brian Sype, Walter Payton. Do I go this way? Okay. Leroy, is that Leroy style? Yep. Leroy Selman, Randy White, Ted Hendricks, Nolan Cromwell, Lester Hayes are on this side. This side. Bear with me because I don't know what there. So. so what you did was you get the stickers, and there's John Hanna, Kellen Winslow. I'm trying to read it through the <laughs> – I can't read it that way. So you got John Hanna. Mike Ken, Kellen Winslow, Gary Johnson, defensive – Art Still for the Chiefs, and Donnie Shell. So that's kind of – okay. And what you did was you just – it was a sticker book. It was really cool. And they were like this. Again, I showed you Lawrence Taylor. Where the hell did I put Lawrence Taylor? So what you do, you just peel it. Tops. I, I basically only collected tops. I see the all these card collecting channels. There's all these different cards. I never even heard of these companies. They're cool. Phil Sims. So, the Cubs of Bear says, I once had Lance Rensel card, but it was overexposed. No one under 60 will get that. <laughs> he had some, yeah, I get that reference. Okay, now let me show you these. These I actually bought later in life. These are, um, these are in really good condition. I bought these in my early – might have been 19 or 20. But this is Jim Taylor. And, again, at the time I bought it for $3. And it's in a sleeve. So let me take, try and take this out without wrecking it. Uh, Jim Taylor, fullback, Green Bay Packers, Hall of Famer. Oh, okay. If I go like that, I think you can see it better. And this is from, of course, now I can't see. This is, where's the year on this thing? It's in the 60s. And I can't see the year because I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> so that's Jim Taylor, Hall of Famer. Pretty good condition. I bought that way back when. I was very happy to find that because I kept going, I have a Jim Taylor card. 
Again, now let's get it back in this stupid sleeve thing. And this is Herb Adderley. I paid $15 for this. Oh, 1966. It's right on the thing. 196. I knew I saw the date. And this is nine. This is his rookie 1964 year. And I don't want to take it out of the sleeve because anyway. So Herb Adderley, rookie card. And this one actually gives the stats on his kickoffs. So that's Herb Adderley. He was a defensive back for the Green Bay Packers. Uh, Jim Taylor, fullback for the Green Bay Packers. Now, these are some things. Um, I told you I had the Gordie Howe card. Okay, I told you. Gordie Howe. Hartford Whalers. Last night, I said, I have that card. I found it. I found it. It took me a while. I found it. <laughs> and we have our good friend, Danny and Gray's Cards and Toys. He said, Al, my man, what's up, brother? Check out that wonderful channel with his son, Grayson. That's his handsome little son. Aren't they handsome father and son? Danny, the father, and Grayson, his son. Wonderful channel. Gordy Howe, pretty good condition. There, is that how we hold these things? I also have his, I found his two sons first before I found this one. They were all over the place. But Wayne Gretzky, one. Well, two actually, because this is a double, but I have two Wayne Gretzky's. Now, Wayne Gretzky after, actually played at the Springfield Civic Center because um, before they became the Hartford Whalers, they were the New England Whalers in the World Hockey League. And the Hartford Civic Center collapsed. The, 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 the roof collapsed after a basketball game, and no one was there, thank God. It was in the middle. It was snow collapsed it. And they had to come play in Springfield. So I do believe... Uh, we can look it up, but Wayne Gretzky played in Springfield, Massachusetts at the Springfield, Springfield Civic Center. I don't think – I don't – I can't remember if he was on the – New. I think he maybe might have been on the New England Whalers because his two – what they what the Whalers did after – they got his two son. They had one son. Then they traded to get the other son, and they got him – he was playing already. He got lured out of retirement. He's 50 years. I think he was 50 years old when he was playing in this league. He was good. Gordy Howe. And this, I love this one. Not really good condition, but this is a 1972-73 scoring leaders. NHL East and it. It's funny. Phil, Phil Esposito in the East and Bobby Clark for the Flyers, the West. So Philadelphia was considered the West. <laughs> but that's a really cool card. And in back, Esposito and Bobby Orr. So Esposito had 130 points. Bobby Orr had 101. And then Jacques Lemieux of the Canadians, 95. Gene Rattel of the Rangers, 94. Out in the Western Division, Western Division, Philadelphia, Bobby Clark had 104. And then uh, Rick McLeish, I didn't say, he had 100 points, both for the – so the top – Philadelphia and Boston had the top four scorers in the league. All right, the absolute. Now, this is a cool card, and you can see – you can't really – there's no Buffalo Bills emblem on it. This is what they used to call highlight cards. I used to like these as a kid because they were moving. I hated the guys just standing there, a la, where are you, Goldie Richards? God damn it, where did I put Goldie Richards? He's somewhere. I forgot where the hell I put him now. Well, I lost Goldie. We'll find Goldie. Don't lose the freaking Green Bay Packer cards, Al. Put them over here. Anyway, uh, where's Goldie? Oh, he's over here. So. These are your normal football cards. This is why I used to love these. The action cards or highlight cards. That's that's uh, Lynn Swan. And he had 577 yards of punts that year in, in yardage return. These are really cool. 
Again, I didn't collect many football cards because I couldn't. To me, this is boring. Now, this is for Uncle Ron because Uncle Ron is a Canadians fan, unfortunately. We still love Uncle Ron. And they haven't won a cup in so long. Dave Gardner will get the reference. So here's your cup, Uncle Ron. I, I know you miss it. Look, Stanley Cup for the Canadians. When's the last time they won it? What? Yeah. Actually, they run. They won it with Patrick Roy. These are things that I like are pretty cool. Team cards. I don't know which way to go with it. But okay, here we go. Team cards. This is the Bruins team card. I thought that I always liked it. And OJ. Rushing leaders. OJ and Jim Otis. Jim Otis played for the Cardinals. So OJ in 1975 rushed for 1,817 yards. Jim Otis for the Cardinals rushed for 1,076 yards. Franco Harris for the Steelers was second in the AFC with 1,246 yards. And Chuck Foreman for the Vikings, 1,070. So that's pretty cool. And here's Jerry Cheevers. We talked about Jerry Cheevers last night uh, when he used to put the stitches on his mask. Okay. And this is, I think you'll get a kick out of this because I used to collect, I used to collect all kinds of cards. And when I found these, Charlie's Angels card. She's got a pump shotgun. How cool is that? Which way do we go? That way. That's a Charlie's Angels card. I used to have like Happy Days cards, Jaws cards, Planet of the Apes cards. They're gone. But And then in back, it formed a puzzle. You know, like you made a puzzle. So this is Fast Gun Supreme, Sabrina. That's what that says. You didn't – this way. Okay. I got to go that way. Fast Gun Sabrina. Don't mess with Sabrina. That, that shotgun will put a big hole in you. You got to love a chick with a gun. All right. OJ, nice. I remember Otis. All his runs were three yards up the middle. Yeah, but he, there were a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. He was a tough runner, Otis. Did he go to Ohio State? I I want to say yes. So, and uh, Bubba Husky asked, "Where are the Cardinals then?" And Tabletop Delaware, St. Louis. Yep, where they should still be. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's where the Cardinals belong in St. Louis, not in Arizona. They should have gave Arizona a different freaking team. And Buckeyes. Okay, excellent, excellent. Oh. You see, I have something for you too, Chris. Star Wars. I had those cards too. Can't find any yet. I don't know if they may, I don't know if they survived it to come to this house. But so he says Star Wars collectibles. Well, let's just go through the Charlie's Angels first. So then uh, this is focusing on danger. I dated okay, let's this way. I dated Farrah Fawcett also. Don't tell Raquel Welch that, but I dated Farrah Fawcett too. Pretty much dated every female. Me and Farah. Anyway, these are the. Oh, this is a this is a good card here. Aren't we a beautiful couple, me and Farah Fawcett? But yeah, I I wish I could find my Jaws cards and my Happy Days cards. I mean, they're kind of fun. I used to collect all kinds of cards. Card collecting was fun. Anyway, those I thought you guys get a kick out of that. It's kind of fun. Um, we don't want to mix the crappy cards with the good cards. Not that it matters. So I, I really do like this card. Yeah, down. Will Voggs collects football, baseball. I have some basketball cards I'm going to show you. So, And here's our good friend Clinton Parks. Check out his wonderful YouTube channel. Look out. What a lovely couple, Clinton and Honey Bunny. That's his lovely wife. Marvelous. He says, I still do collect. Excellent. Happy Days cards. Ralph the Mouth. Yeah, no, I had them. I had them. If I come across them, I'll show you them. You can find them. Like, if you type in on YouTube images, you can find the cards. So, okay. And I really do like this card. I'm happy I found. God, which way do I go? This way? I'm happy I found um, this card. And, I, and again, I like the... Um, 
action cards. I'll get used to which side to go. It's opposite of, I have to remember, go the opposite way that I want to go. But uh, again, extremely happy I found the Gordie Howe card. And the Wayne Gretzky cards. So that's pretty cool. And I like the Jerry Cheevers card. And this one, again, Uncle Ron, there's your Stanley Cup for Uncle Ron, Canadians fan. Stanley Cup. Ooh, Clan Park says, Goodwill is a great place sometimes for all sorts of sports cards. That's really cool. People probably bring them in there without, yeah, so, okay. Thanks, that's good. Good stuff to know. And where's Gordy Howe? Let's get Gordy Howe. And I actually have a double of Wayne Gretzky. So that's cool. All right, let's put these over here. I like these cards. All right, so again, this is the sticker books. And now this is the red, this is the baseball. This is 1925 cents, 1983. And again, this is always cool. I like the logos. This is what attract the color. And this is Reggie Jackson's on the cover. Let's see how many Red Sox I got. So we're going to go back to the football in a second. And this is the first time I'm doing this stuff. So we got baseball, baseball. Oh, this was, okay, that's 82. That's 83. What the hell year is this one then? This has to be 81 or 80. Jim Plunkett, what year is this? 81. So, okay. So at 81, 82, 83. But they got better with the covers. So this one, you can see no emblem. By the next year, Look at this. Unfreaking believable. I was in love. I'm like, I have to buy this. All right. So let's do the let's do the baseball. And again, they were sticker books. So this is 1981. And this is 1983. With so I don't know where my 82 is. Anyway, so 1981. Uh George Brett. Is on the cover, and at the back, I'm not really thrilled with. I like this. I like I like this better with all the the teams and the logos. I really like that. So let's see. Let's see how many Red Sox I got. I usually never had luck with Red Sox. All right, let's see. But the, I tell you, these were really cool. You know, and again, as a kid, I didn't have you know a ton of money. So when I had my little chores and I made a little money, this is what I spent it on. And I never had luck with red. Okay, so the Yankees. I know we have Yankees. Ooh, I finished Oakland. I was very happy with that. I like the A's. So in Oakland, let's show you. Oh, Bubba Husky. Let's see what Bubba says. As Tabletop says, that's the one I have. Uh, 81. This one? I believe this was the 81 one. Let me look back. Yes, 81. Okay, so that's cool. Bubba Husky says, I found a Sebio box that contains my baseball cards collection as well. Handled because we didn't know you weren't supposed to build cards. Yeah, I mean, we were kids. So that's pretty fun. Cool, Bubba. And ram them with our G.I. Joe vehicles. That's funny. And Captain Carl's here. How you doing, Captain Carl? Good friend of the channel. FOC member. We're just going through some of the collectibles I had as a kid. So Oakland, I liked Oakland. It was the second team I rooted for when Billy Martin went there. I'm a big Billy Martin fan. I know a lot of people don't like Billy Martin. Well, I do. And they had Ricky Henderson, Tony Armas, Dave Revering, Wayne, uh, I'm sorry, Jeff Newman, Dwayne Murphy. This was actually one of the best outfields in baseball. Tony Armas. Uh, Ricky Henderson. And Dwayne Murphy. Um, Murphy was in center. Armas was in right. When he came to the Red Sox, he played center. And Henderson was in left. 
So you had Rick Langford, Mike Norris. I was an oh man, when I got to see if I, I would be so happy if I got to see Mike Norris on a Saturday if they had a double header on NBC Sports. So this is I got all the A's and I was ecstatic. I don't know how well you guys can see this. I apologize. But the sound's pretty good from the camera, isn't it? I don't have to wear the headphones. I'm pretty I'm pretty psyched about that. Yankees. Uh, I have Winfield, Gossage, Tommy John, and Rick Cerrone. I don't have Jackson, Randolph, Bucky, Dent, and Guidry. So those are the Yankees. Again, I have four out of eight. And it's kind of cool because they give you the pennants, a little information, the pennants in the World Series. And the ballpark. So let's see the Red Sox. I never had luck with Red Sox. Let's see how many Red Sox I got. Cleveland, uh, for Tribes fan, I, I finished Cleveland. And that's Cleveland. I'll read off the players. Toby Hera. Joe Charbonneau, rookie of the year. Go, go, Joe Charbonneau. Had that one good year. Rick Manning, Andre Thornton, Mike Hargrove, the human rain delay. M Miguel DeLeon, Ron Hassey, and Len Barker. So I completed that one, the Indians. That's kind of cool, right? Uh, tabletop. Sports shows. Everything is good on this end. Cool. I didn't even know. I, I plugged the camera in. I started going blah, 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 like singing to myself. I'm like, wait a second. It says there's a mic on. I know there's, I just, that's, so that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm glad I can do this because next time when I roll dice and stuff, I, I, um, I don't have to, you know, wear the headphones. And sometimes I don't mind wearing them, but sometimes it, this weather kills my sinuses and it hurts my ears. Not that you guys give a crap, but. I don't like wearing the headphones. Captain Carl says he has the Beatles doll, including a cardboard drum set for Ringo John. L Who has that? I missed something. Oh, here it is. Captain said, Captain Carl says, my brother is a keeper of our collections in fireproof safes. And that then, then this, this one here, that is cool. The Beatles collection. I'm hearing you well on this end. Cool. Excellent. All right, so let's check out the Red Sox. It's probably going to be kind of a long stream, but it's Friday. And maybe. Oh, this is the All Star. That's kind of cool. Um, but I want to say, I never had luck with the Red Sox. So let's find the Red Sox. I didn't have good luck with the All Stars either. Four out of. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four out of eight. Um, not bad. Tony, okay, so the Red Sox were Rice, uh, Jim Rice, Fred Lynn, Tony Perez, Carly Stramski, Dave Stapleton, Dennis Eckersley, Carlton Fisk, and uh, Carney Lansford. And I have Lynn, Perez, Lansford, and Fisk. And again, this was really cool. I, I thought this was a really fun collectible when I, when I was a kid. And just the whole sticker thing was cool. It was a great concept to me. Um, Angels, I have four. Butch Hobson was playing with the Angels then. Thank God he wasn't with the Red Sox anymore. Burleson, Rod Carew. Um, so that's pretty cool. Let's see. If, so I completed a – let's see if there's any other teams I completed. Um, almost had all the Mariners. Let's just look through. Oh, Cubs. For the Cubs, the Bears. Kingman, Buckner, I think Russell, and Rents, third baseman. Uh, I don't have Mike Tyson. It's funny because I have a gazillion Mike Tyson baseball cards, but I couldn't get the freaking sticker. Okay. So that's the 1981 sticker book. Are there any teams you guys want? Oh, I got Cincinnati. Johnny Bench, Concepcion, Foster, Collins, Dreesen, Seaver, 
you and Ken Griffey Sr. I only have three. But again, it was a fun concept. Tremendously fun concept. Let's check out. So that's 81. This is 83. And again, much better in back. Look at, compare. Which one do you like better? This one with all the baseball logos or this one with Palmer, Jackson, and Brett? I like, this captured me more. I just thought this was baseball right here, you know? Oh, Pirates, absolutely. So our good friend Chris, Tabletop Sports Delaware. I got some interesting Pirates cards to show you. Let's find the Pirates. Uh, oh, the Mets. I'm, I, oh, I almost had all the Mets. Pirates. Pittsburgh Pirates, where are you? Well, I'm going to show you a couple of Pirates who were all-stars first. Dave Parker. I believe that's Bibby. And I thought the all-star cards were really cool stickers. Um, so we will find the Pirates. Bear with me a moment. Blue Jays, Cubs, Reds. I still say these are one of some of the, I just, I like the old Expos uniforms. I always did. Mets. Cardinals. Pa Ooh! You know, I'm just going to put this, this is for our good friend, Chris from Tabletop Sports Delaware. Please check out that channel and subscribe. A full completion. Look at that. How cool is that? That's awesome. I'm so happy. I'm glad he picked it. So I'll tell you the players if you can't see them. Phil Gardner, Omar Moreno, Mike Eastler, the hit dog. That's what they used to call Mike Eastler. He played briefly with the Red Sox. Dave Parker, Ed Ott, Willie Pop Stargell, Jim Bibby, and Bill Madlock. And it's a complete team, so that's pretty cool. Are there any other teams you want to see in 81 in the sticker book? The Hitman, yep. That's pretty cool. Good call. Because I was looking to see if I had – so that's three teams I completed. All right. All right. Well, we'll move on to the next one. Again. Fair Fawcett. Don't tell Raquel Welch I date her. She was like my side squeeze. You know what I'm saying? All right. These were interesting. This pissed me off, but I – record breakers. You had to actually get – okay. How can I put this? Record breakers. You had to – I don't know if you can actually see this. I got to go this way like this. They're in halves. You had to get an up and then a bottom. So each – so like say for Rob and Yao, established uh, World Series record for most hits – with four or more hits, with four or more hits, two uh, versus the Cardinals. I don't know what the hell that means, but he had a lot of hits in the World Series. So the point being is, there's an upper portion, and then there's an upper portion, and then there's a lower portion. So these came in halves, and I'll show you what I mean. And this pissed me off. I'm like, really? You have to get two just to get a card? And I liked the championship thing. That was a lot of fun. And that World Series was a lot of fun, the 82 championship. All right, so let's take a look at – oh, this was really cool. They did a much better job in this one. So they have the home run kings. Now, I didn't get Hank Aaron and Babe Ruth, but I did get Willie Mays and Frank Robinson. I love how they have the, the, the American flag in the background. That's just freaking awesome. And they're such great players, Willie Mays and uh, Frank Robinson. And then you have – Reggie Jackson, Carly Stremski, Johnny Bench. Act, uh, these were the active kings. Tony Perez, Lee May, Mike Schmidt, Dave Kingman. Reggie Smith, so strange to see him in a giant uh, hat. Nettles and Rusty Stab La Grande Orange. They did I, – I, so from the first version – or one to – 78 jump. This was a much better thought-out process in um, 
1983. Much better. They got much better with it. I don't know if they still have these. I doubt it. I, I mean, I don't play. And then lead leaguers. So the Red Sox, again, never had good luck with the Red Sox. I have Jerry, Remy, and Mark Clear. And lots of empty spaces. So let's check out Pittsburgh. Freddie Lynn just does not look right in the Angels uniform. You got Reggie Jackson. Bobby the Grinch that stole Christmas. Doug DeSensei and Jeff Zahn. I don't have Carew, Baylor, or Boone. Then the White Sox. Remember these uniforms for the White Sox? 1983? Britt Burns, Tom Pachorek, Tony Bernazard, and Harold Baines. That's kind of cool. Let's check out the Pirates. I don't have, I don't, I'm not seeing any full teams on these. I have lots of doubles with these because I have a lot of extra stickers. Fernando, let's see. Yankees, Willie Randolph, Roy Smalley, Jer uh, Jerry Mumphrey, Ken Griffey, Dave Winfield, Rich Gossage. Butch Weiniger and Ron Guidry, I have three. I have Smalley, Mumphrey, and um, Weiniger for the Yankee fans. Okay. Davey Lopes with the A's. Rick Lanford, Dan Meyer, Blue Jays. Um, 82 record breakers. I was happy to get the. This was kind of cool. I like this when they did this for the All Star game. I really like this. I, uh, when I looked back at it, when I opened it up, I said, "Yeah, so much." They were so much more creative with this uh, set than they were with the '81 set. And I don't know where my '82 is. So, but I like that. That was really cool. See, this is what I'm talking about. The Habs. This pissed me off to no end. I so desperately wanted. To, uh, that's Ricky Henderson. I needed two more stickers. And I never could get them. So it was like a little puzzle piece. And like I said, I was an Oakland A, you know, Red Sox fan first, but I rooted for Oakland too. Unless they're playing the Red Sox. Ooh, didn't do too well there. The Cubs, the Bears for the Cubs, the Bears. So did, we got uh, four out of eight. Johnstone, Boa, Moreland, Buckner, and Jody Davis. We don't have Dick Tidrow, Fergie Jenkins. And Landrum, one, two, three, four, five, five. We have five out of eight. Bad counting on my part. Bill Buckner just passed away this year. God rest his soul. I only have three Reds. The Reds were pretty much done, but still Johnny Bench is still playing. But we do have Tom Seaver, so that's kind of neat. Tom Seaver, he's he, his health is failing. That's sad. So, um, Yes, I will show that. I, I want to. Uh, I'm going to show you something really shortly. I have these old big baseball cards. I found them. I found them. I wasn't going cuckoo, and they're not the size of those. They're big. <laughs> the Cubs of Bear says, "I always was a big Keith Moreland fan. Thanks for the memories. He was a pretty good player, Keith Moreland." Um, Oh, I had. We're, I didn't have good luck on this set. I'm just going through here. I want to find the Pirates. This is kind of neat. George Foster, if you remember. Let me just get the Cubs and Bears out of there for a moment. Uh, with the Mets. The Mets were just starting to get a little bit more competitive. And they were actually a really fun team to watch. We just start. We had gotten Channel 20 out of Connecticut. And they had Mets games. And we got, we got to watch the Mets on Friday nights. Um, so that was really cool. In the summer when you were a kid, I was like, hey, I'm watching the Mets. Watch. And again, I would be in heaven if one of the teams, like if the Red Sox were on the West Coast and the Mets were on the East Coast, and I get to watch a doubleheader because I'd watch the Red Sox because they would be on Channel 38 um, or they'd be on the local affiliate. Again, you didn't get all the Red Sox games, so that's where radio came in. Um, people don't understand that. But it, you know, it's the way it was. It was a lot of fun. So for the Pirates, they had Bill Matlock, Jason Thompson. Man, he played a long time. He played with Detroit, if I remember correctly. Don Robinson, the pitcher. Omar Moreno, Dale Barra, Yogi's son. 
Dave Parker, Tony Pena, and John Candelaria. I only have four out of eight. So that's kind of cool. And if there's uh, okay, and I think that's about it for that. Reggie Smith. Oh, this is, wow. Look at that. You're going to have some fun with this one. The San Francisco Giants. San Francisco Giants. Okay. Now, think about this. Okay. Greg Minton, Jack Clark, Milt May, Reggie Smith, Joe Morgan, Johnny Lamaster, Daryl Evans, and Al Holland. Reggie Smith and Joe Morgan. I got to figure out which way to point here. This way. Right here. Uh, right there. Okay. In Giants uniforms. And they're actually, I don't know if this is the year, but they're a pretty fun team. One of these early 80 years, they contended to like the last two weeks of the season, and they were on um, game of the week quite a bit because they were doing double headers down the stretch because it was a pretty good race. I have Wade Boggs, Stars of the Future. They were right about that. Cal Ripken, Wade Boggs. That's kind of cool. Again, I mean, it's not the point if they're worth something. I doubt it. It's just memories. I'm going to show you. They used to have, I don't know, do they still have these, Will, or anyone else in the chat who collects cards? Future stars? There's like, you read the names, you're like, yeah, these guys sucked. Or they didn't, you know, I shouldn't say suck. They, you know, they didn't pan out to be future stars, that's for sure. Uh, future stars. Chili Davis, Bob Denier, Johnny Ray, David Green, Steve Sachs, and Willie McGee. Well, they hit on a couple of these. Itchy you know. So that's the that's the uh, sticker books. I thought this was really cool, and I like this one again much better, more creative. The 1983 version is much more creative than the 81. I think 81 might have been the first time they did it, and it was a little more bland, but it was fun. So, and again, you can see 81 for football was kind. Of, the only thing they had this this captured me again. To me, oh god, I almost lost the good cards. Well, they would have fallen. I'm not love. To me, this this captured me. For the football. Uh, look, look at the helmets. Old school. Two bars. It's the way football should be played. You come with these Quarterbacks, one bar. Wide receivers, one bar. Linebackers, they can wear that two and the one. It makes them look mean. They wear all these stupid, and the helmets are oversized. They look like goofballs. Look at that. Look at this. Come on. Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to do this backwards is right there. Tampa Bay, much better, much better helmet, much better. Patriots helmet, Pat the Patriot, much better helmet. Now the Jets went back to old school, which I kind of like better now. Sort of old school. Um, I like the Eagles. I like that the Giants though went back to NY. Atlanta should go back to the red. Or that there. There we go. Atlanta should go back to the red. And Denver should go back to that helmet. They should go back. The helmets they have now suck. Multicolors uniforms, like when they do that. College teams do it all the time, that multicolor. What the hell is that crap? I didn't come here to watch Madden football. I don't, It's like watching some 8-year-old, 12-year-old play freaking Madden. I don't, I, I, normal uniforms, please. The product on the field is what's important. I hate the uniforms in college. They're stupid. Something, ooh. I completed a football team. <laughs> 49ers. You got Clark, Earl Cooper, Steve DeBerg, Jim Miller, Freddie Solomon. You know you're in trouble when the kicker makes the sticker squad. Randy Cross, Charlie Young, and Bobby Leopold. And this is the year before they got good. Before Joe Montana took over. Comics with Bueller. Okay. See, now I'm going to switch gears real quick. I found some comics I bought way back in the day. Didn't have many. This is one of my all-time favorite comics. Again, not in any good condition, but I read the crap out of this comic. The Losers. It's a World War II. I read the... Living bejesus. Look how beat up this comic is. Look how the pages are. Again, 
these are just memories. And please check out Comics with Bueller and Sam's Tangled Web, two great channels. So I couldn't find my Sergeant Rock. So I again, I bought this stuff with my, you know, the money you'd earn, shoveling, raking, all kinds of stuff. So, all right, and we're gonna get to some cool other things, but Star Wars. This was like a comic book book, full color, Return of the Jedi. It's the whole movie. I have a Flash Gordon down there somewhere, too. I can't find it. Oh, look at that. How cool is that? <laughs> the final chapter. So that's like a comic book book. But here's some. This one. Oh, my God. So the ones I did buy, I bought a lot of. I couldn't find the couple of Captain Americas. But, again, I bought these obscure comics. The Rawhide Kid. And, again, this is one I read a lot because it was Cowboys. I like Cowboys. So. The Rawhide Kid. Anyway, so it's a some I don't know. I just I found this stuff going down to look for my uh, cards, and then I have a lot of super. Well, a lot. I don't have a lot, and I have something for OG if he jumps in the chat, or I'm gonna wait till we do a. a uh, okay. Comics with Bueller asks, "How do you like Streamyard? I tried it out today. I like it. I think what I'm gonna do." I, I know Ron Juckett sent them an email, so thanks to Ron. He asked some questions, if you want to know. He asked them, you know, read the policy. Uh, it says at some point, you know, buyer beware, and there, it's a very good app. I'm not trying to say it's not. If you're using the free thing and they get enough, if there's a lot of people, the paid people are going to be able to stream first. Um, so just be aware of that. Check that out. I like it. You can – you can. Um, you can do a lot of cool things, and tomorrow, hopefully, with chat with Al, we'll have some guests on. Uh, I just want to show some collectibles. It's going to be a long stream. I'm not tired, so I'm just going to show stuff. And if you want to stay up and watch and jump in later on or something, that's cool. Or um, so, yeah, I like it. Um, it's sixty dollars for one year, and then the second tier level is one hundred and twenty dollars. So, and, or you get the free one. They say they're not going to get rid of the free one. But here's the thing. They need to make money, right? It's a wonderful app. You can do all kinds of cool things with it. Much easier to work with for something like this than OBS. I'm still going to stream my games with OBS. But with this, I like it a lot. So, The Cubs, the Bears. I'm so glad you mentioned the Rawhide Kid was, a, was about Cowboys. Well, I want to make sure everyone knew. You know, it's not about tampons. Can you say tampons? It's not bad, right? Oh, man. This this one. And we're going to get to some really cool baseball cards. Up. Superman getting knocked out by... Who the hell is that guy? Rhino something, dude. And I, I, was, I colored it in. I was so pissed. <laughs> okay, so it says, You may be the man of tomorrow, Superman, but I am the man of forever. Not even you can defeat the super-powered immortal. So this is the immortal. And uh, that's kind of cool. And I, I already knew when we pulled, myself and Nurse Teresa pulled this one out, I knew exactly why I bought this one. This was a set. I wanted so desperately to buy this set of revo revolutionary uh, war pieces. And it was 225 It was 225 And I never bought it. Now I got something similar, similar at a toy store, but it wasn't 204 Revolutionary War pieces, so that's pretty cool. And uh, let's see some of the artwork. The other cool thing is I don't know if they do this now, but they used to do these little ads with the superheroes. Like this is this is for uh, junk food. Do you see that apple pies? Do you see that? It's hilarious. It's Batman, and then he gives the kid. Uh, it's Hostess. That's pretty funny. God, it was so much better then. No PC crap. And the artwork's pretty cool. That King Kong movie sucked in 1976. Let me just show you some of the art. I want to get some action. 
Where's the Epi? So here's some of the artwork. So comics looked a little different. Then this is, oh, I have to show you this picture to show how much Aquaman's a nerd. Let me find that one. He's getting the shit kicked out by a starfish. I joke with you not. Don't tell me Aquaman's cool. I'm going to find that. I, I, I laughed. Nurse Teresa was like, why are you laughing so hard? I'm like, it's Aquaman. Okay, I'm going to find that. Hold on. Where is Aquaman? He's actually getting the crap beat out of him by a starfish. Here it is. You think I'm joking. How can you like uh, He's getting beat up by a starfish. It's a freaking starfish. That's Aquaman getting the shit kicked out of him. It's a starfish. Aquaman got his ass kicked by a starfish. Don't tell me Aquaman's cool. He's the worst superhero ever. Starfish. Aquaman. Getting his ass kicked. <laughs> People. Evidence. I don't want to hear about Aquaman anymore. He's not in the bunker with us at the end. Thomas Rupiler says, that's not quite a starfish. It looks like a starfish to me. What is it? Starfish. He got beat up by a starfish. Starfish on steroids, mind you. Doesn't matter. He got beat up by a starfish. And his comics and Bueller's laughing. A huge starfish, Al. Yes, it is, Bubba Husky. But that's a big starfish. It doesn't matter. He, it's a starfish. Do you think Superman's going to get his ass kicked by a starfish? Okay. Anyway. Um... Tommy Fupuler finally says, okay, it's a starfish. And again, I'm just joking around. I don't like Aquaman at all. Um, Justice League. Adam, do you guys, I don't, uh, Adam Strange? Enemy of Earth. And again, I got this because it's a Justice League and there's a lot of Superman in it. And at the end, they all become friends, it looks like. So they have a kumbaya moment after him trying to kill them all. Table stops. Uh, the Cubs of Bear says, Table top sports Delaware. Good call. I remember those ads. Also with Joe Weider, bodybuilding ads. And those. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have them. Ooh, look at this. Look at this ad. This is awesome. Evil Knievel. This was, these were such cool action toys. I had, I had uh, this one. The, this bike. But these were like really awesome action figure toys. My friend had the, um, this is in England. That's like when he's in England, when he jumped the uh, buses. My friend had that. Yeah, Evil Knievel. Talking about cool ads. So that's pretty cool. All right. Let's see what else we have here. Anyway, those are some comics. Um, and again, I have a Sergeant Rock I can't find. I don't know if I made um, Is this Dr. J? This could be Dr. J on this back. Spalding. I think that's Dr. J. I think that's supposed to be Dr. J. Possibly Bill Walton. What do you guys think? Dr. J and Bill Walton? I don't know if it says their name. Oh, Rick Barry and Dr. J up top. So that's Rick Barry and Dr. J. Did you ever think that you'd see Rick Barry as a comic book figure? We're showing you some incredible stuff here. Okay. And let's see if we, let's look at some of these ads. Oh! The bodybuilder ads you guys are talking about. And then everything you could ever buy down here. Prizes or cash. <laughs> and oh god, this is this this thing's right about to fall apart. I'm gonna have to read this later. And let's look at some of the artwork here. Trying to get something that I think stands. Ooh, this is a good one. 
Again, it's beat up. I read the crap out of this when I was a kid. Pretty cool artwork. You see the U-bolt. Clan Park says, didn't one of those baseball games used to sell in those comics? Possibly. I don't see that. Oh, things they won't do anymore. I so desperately wanted these BB guns. <laughs> oh, God. Handguns of the Axis. <laughs> anyway. Tabletop Sports Dollar says, I know Appa was on the back cover of a football digest. Yes. All right. So that's the comics. I just thought I'd share that if comics with Bueller came on. He did. Um, so I wanted to share that. And, uh, if I find anything else that's cool when it comes to comic related stuff. The newest comic I have, as you get to see me get up and walk, this is Walking Dead. Nurse Teresa got this for me. Walking Dead. Might as well show you the newest comic. I've read it. I'm going to put it in one of those thingies. Walking Dead. I kind of like the back of it. That's the game. Uh, one of these app games. But th I wish there was. Th this is the cover cover. I actually like the back better. And again, that's a game. But it's pretty cool artwork. You see Negan. I'm a big Negan fan. I like Negan. And the artwork's kind of cool. Black and white, but it's really cool. So, anyway, that's that. And let's put that back over here. Now, I want to show you Okay, so where is this? This is again, I think you guys might get a kick out of this. I don't know. You might. God and believe me, so this is when I'm really, really, really young. And uh, my, the glasses were in style in the day. And I was actually in pretty good shape then. To train like a boxer. But I met, so this is Dave Collins. Big Red, center, Boston Celtics. And I think he played at the end with Milwaukee. Came out of retirement, played for the Milwaukee Bucks, I think. I want to say yes, the Milwaukee Bucks. So that's Dave Collins. A couple of basketball cards. All-star Dave Collins. Very Hall of Famer. Okay. That's me with Dave Collins way back in the day at a boxing function. I look a little I look stancy, don't I? Okay. Now I'll show you another one. Might as well show you this. This is Michael Moore, heavyweight champion. He was light heavyweight champion, uh, WBO, and was going to fight for the cruiserweight title. Wicked nice guy. I spent like 20, 25 minutes talking with him. Just There was no lines. You just talk. They mingle. And really nice guy. I actually felt bad I was rooting for George Foreman when Foreman knocked him out. And this is... I cried when Emmanuel Stewart passed away. The, Emmanuel Stewart, one of the nicest celebrities I have ever, ever met. Uh, Kronk Jim, trainer, Tommy Hearns, Hilmer Kente, Lennox Lewis. Well, Lewis isn't on a Kronk, but, you know, and many others. And again, those glasses were in style in the day. So, but yeah. Um, I have a picture with Vito Scotti, but I didn't pull that one out. He was in The Godfather. So, but now those were fun times. And so I've got these are again, I, I didn't find all my basketball cards. I don't have a lot of them, but Dave Collins, I knew where that was. Uh, all star and regular Dave Collins. And the basketball cards are really big um, compared to that. And that that's uh, Derek Harper, good ball player. So you can see the size difference. Okay. I kind of like these better. Okay. Dave Collins and Al Red Sox fan with Dave Collins. God, I had to be 20 something, 21. That's when I could hit a speed bag. <laughs> I could do pretty much everything pretty good. I could never skip rope. 
I was a horrible. My uncle used to laugh when he watched me train and skip rope. <laughs> I just, I just got to hit him. That's all I used to say. Let me hit him. I, I, I never, I sparred a lot. I didn't. They wouldn't sign the papers when I was younger, so I just stayed with it after I got a little older. It's great to stay in shape that way. All right, so that's that. Um, here's another one. David Thompson, good, good David Thompson, for the, good player, David Thompson. Okay. Uh, yep, sad, sweet pea passed away. Let's put this over here. Um, this is a cool set before I get to these wonderful baseball baseball cards because I just showed you Michael Moore, uh, some boxing. I like these are um, ring lords. These are really great cards. I bought these a long time ago, but fabulous cards. I have to look up to see if they have any more of these. That's a Vander Holyfield. Okay. Some people, the GOAT, Muhammad Ali. Uh, you might not know Virgil Hill, light heavyweight champion. Virgil Hill. Okay. Frank Tate, middleweight champion. Donovan Razor Ruddick from O Canada. Had two wars with Mike Tyson, and Lennox Lewis knocked him out to win the vacant title. Then, of course, James Buster Douglas. These cards are beautiful. Who makes – and they're ring lords. Wonderful cards, and they're really nice. Uh, terrible Tim Witherspoon. Okay. Mr. New York, Ronaldo Snipes. Alex Stewart, heavyweight contender. Dropped it. Carl the Truth Williams. He passed away, I think. I'm pretty sure he did, unfortunately. Bruce Seldon had a portion of the heavyweight title. Pretty much everyone had a portion of the heavyweight title. Tommy the Duke Morrison passed away, unfortunately, also. All time great. Lennox Lewis. These are really nice cards. Uh, let's, uh, European heavyweight champion, Francesco Damiani, and WBO heavyweight champion. And he was beating, defending his title against Ray Mercer in Atlantic City during a snowstorm. I don't know how to uh, – okay. Should I go this way? All right. And uh, he was winning the fight, Francesco was. And then Mercer is just starting to get him a little more, and Mercer hit him on the big schnoz. Broke his nose. Damiani went down for the 10 count and lost his WBO title. It's Ray Mercer. Good, good fighter. Okay. Michael Moore, the pugilist I met, which I really enjoyed in my time with him. I thought he was a very nice guy. Robert Daniels was a cruiserweight. Then he became a heavyweight. Michael Dokes. Tommy the Hitman Hearns, always in exciting fights. Very few boring fights for Tommy the Hitman Hearns. Out of Kronk, he was an Emmanuel Stewart fighter. So was Lennox Lewis, but not out of Kronk. Uh, Dennis Andres actually fought out of Kronk at one time, even though he was English. And Tommy Hearns beat him for the light heavyweight title. Hands of Stone, Roberto Duran. Christophe Tizio, French. He had a world title. Julian Jackson, middleweight and junior middleweight. Mike, the body snatcher McCollum, junior middleweight and middleweight champion. I don't know if Julian Jackson was middleweight. He was junior middleweight champion. I don't think he was middle. Michael Nunn, middleweight champion, a portion. Yeah. Iran Barkley. I want to make sure. I was like, that is Iran Barkley. I'm looking at that going, that's Iran Barkley. Middleweight champion. He beat Tommy Hearns twice. He had Tommy Hearns' number. Chris Eubank was a world champion out of England. Meldrick Taylor, teammate to Pernell Whitaker in the Olympics. Uh, Marlon Starlin from Hartford, Connecticut, down the road, world uh, welterweight champion, WBA. 
think it was WBA. Marlon Starlin. Moochie. The Magic Man, Marlon Starlin. Glenwood Brown. Mark Breland on that Olympic team in 84. Won a gold medal. Big fan favorite Mexicans and Mexican Americans. Julio Cesar Chavez, who had that controversial draw with Sweet P. Whitaker, who just unfortunately passed away when he got hit by a car walking. At least that's what I read. Loretto Garza, good fighter from the West Coast. A lot of action fights for Loretto Garza. Champion at a lower weight class. Not one of my favorites, Hector Camacho. Unfortunately, he also passed away. Not one of my favorites. And here's Purnell Whitaker, Sweet P. He just died a couple of days ago. Uh, Bleacher Bums Gaming did a tribute about using Glory Days Boxing with him and Chavez, a, re, uh, a, a, re, uh, a refight of their, of their fight. Check it out. I'm not going to tell you what happens. It's unbelievable. Bubba Husky says, uh, I'll buy your Peter McNeely right now. I need him to complete my set. I don't have Peter McNeely. <laughs> As he's laughing. Tracy Spann was a contender, lower weight divisions, lightweight. Brian Mitchell out of South Africa was a world champion, junior junior lightweight champion. Luis Mendoza, I think, won a title. I, I, I can't recall, but I think he won a lighter weight title. Let me look back here. Can't see with my outline glasses. so I think he won a title. Orlando Canizales fought a lot on TV. He was a Bantamweight champion. And he had a brother, Gabby. Good fighters, good action fighters. And Michael Carberhall had some wars with uh, Umberto Gonzalez. I think they fought like three, four times. They were flyweight. They killed each other. It was unbelievable. Great fights. So those are beautiful, beautiful cards. Beautiful cards. Breaking. Mets just lost one nothing extra innings. The Cubs and Bears give us the report when the left fielder dropped an easy fly ball. I love it. I love it. The baseball package. Yep, very good package. Rightfully so. He was a bozo who got knocked out by a piece of stuff. I don't, I don't know what that means, Bubba, so no comment. I didn't see what you were saying before. Uh, Rob, explanation points here in the chat. Check out his wonderful channel. A lot of Glory Days boxing he's doing. How are you liking the lightweight set, Ron? I've caught, I caught, um, try to catch some of your live stuff when I can. And that's Rob, explanation point. Okay. And again, these are really cool boxing cards. I bought these at a collectible store. And I got to look up to see if they have any more sets. Really nice. These are really sharp cards. I've not seen any more. Uh, not that I go to collectible stores anymore. But let's put those back away. And let's get to some really cool old baseball cards. Hope everyone's enjoying the stream. If you have any questions. God, I can't get this stuff in the car. And again, Farah and me as a couple. Charlie's Angels cards. Found those. That was pretty funny. Okay. I just like everything about this boxing card set. I love the uh, deck of cards. I just love the whole thing. It's just really cool. It looks like a playing deck. And it just it keeps them really cool. So these are the cards I got at a yard sale way back in the day. Um, and I, I don't want to start you off with the real good ones yet. I'll give it the my the, the they're just cool. I don't know if these are tops. Let me look. And they're not in mint condition, so I'm not um, I think yeah, they are tops. These are really cool. Uh, let's, do this. let's start you off with for the Seattle Pilots, the one year they were in existence, Tommy Harper. Tommy Harper. And 1969. So this is a this came out in 70 if it's 69 stats. See how the stats are on the back? And Tommy Harper in 1969 batted 235, nine homers, and 41 ribbies. 
pretty a good uh, base runner, a good base stealer, played for the Red Sox later on. Um, and he hit a little better when he got to the Red Sox. But that's a Seattle Pilot, so I think that's really cool. I actually have this team in basic strap, the Seattle Pilots, and it was only one year. So that's Tommy Harper. And we have also have here um, the, uh, Dave Lowe says, who was the guy who fought – in present, uh, Jake Scott, was it Jake Scott? Something like that. Jake Scott also played safety for the Dolphins. Uh, Rawway state present, in fact. Something Scott, something Scott. Uh, Dwight Muhammad Kwagi, who was then um, Dwight Braxton, went in and kicked the shit out of him. And the question uh, in a title eliminator, he's a light heavyweight, and I'm going to have to look that up, but I think it was Jake, I think the last name was Scott. And uh, the question was asked, because he was not coming out. He was in there for murder or something. He was never coming out, right? And uh, it, he was he was a top-ranked contender. And uh, Dwight Braxton, who then changed his name Dwight, to Dwight Muhammad Kwa'i, won, uh, won the light heavyweight championship from Matthew Saad Muhammad. Uh, yeah, I think he beat Matthew Saad Muhammad. And then uh, Michael Spinks defeated him to unify the title. Um he went to – who had come out of jail, who actually I think was in Rawway at one – or was in prison. I don't know if it was Rawway. Uh, went in there and he beat him, and that solved all the problems because he never fought a big fight again. I want to say it was Jake Scott, something Scott. I'll have to look it up. But it was Rawway. It was in New Jersey. I think Rawway's in New Jersey. So, uh, And we have our good friend. Great question by Dave Little. Thank you for asking. We have a great friend, lots of boxing knowledge. He'll definitely – if you're not watching the fight, Pacquiao and Thurman – Go to his channel. He does a wonderful blow-by-blow -blow commentary. What's Blazing in Sports? T-Dub. Another must-subscribe in our community. I like uh, Pacquiao in that fight. I think – I have a feeling if he if he doesn't get old when he steps in that ring and he's he's not the same Pacquiao, he's going to kill Thurman. I swear to God he's going to kill him. Thurman doesn't throw punches. He doesn't throw punches, Thurman. He waits. He waits the counter. Pacquiao, if he has anything left, is going to go in and out, in and out, ba-ba-boom, ba-ba-boom. Ba -ba -boom. Now, if he gets caught, he could still get knocked out. Thurman hits okay. He, Thurman's too much of a lackadaisical fighter. I still say Terry Port, uh, uh, Porter beat him, Terry Porter, but Porter. So. so, again, check out What's Blazing in Sports. Wonderful, wonderful. James Scott, thank you. Thank you, Rob. Explain. I said I knew Jake Scott. I'm sitting with that. I knew it was Scott. I thought it started with a J. James Scott, and he was out of Rawway State Prison. And look it up, uh, Dwight Braxton, who then changed his name, Dwight Muhammad Kwa'i, when he beat Matthew Saad Muhammad, who was formerly Matthew Franklin. Um, they converted it to uh, Islam. Uh, he, he went to Rawway and he beat him. And that was a big thing. Are you going to let this guy who's in there for murder fight for the title? <laughs> uh, but problem solved by now Dwight Muhammad, uh, Dwight Muhammad Kwa'i. Thank you. Uh, Rob, explanation point. James Scott. Okay. So now, another, this is Joe Horner, Joel Edward Hor Horlin, excuse me. And he was a pitcher, White Sox. We're going to save that. So we have short time. Oh, Hondo. That was Frank Howard's name, Hondo. Washington Senators. Not the Washington Nationals, Washington Senators, Hondo. And he was on, oh, no, he just missed out. No, he's on the 63 Dodgers. They beat the Yankees. So he does have a World Series ring. And, again, I love, these are really cool cards. I got these way back at a tag sale. That's right. And, again, they're not in mint condition. I'm not saying, oh, fumble. I'm just saying they're really cool. Frank Howard. Hondo, he played the outfield in first base. He he would have been a DH in, in the American League if it was now. He could hit the crap. Oh, my God, he could hit the ball far. Jim Fregosi for the California Angels. Pretty cool. Pretty cool helmets there. I like those colors. Light blue and red. California Angels. Jim Fregosi. Okay. Great player. We're going to start to get some Tony Oliva. For the Minnesota Twins. 
1969, he batted 309. The Twins in 69, that's the first year that they had an American League East, an American League West, a National League East, a National League West. Baltimore won the East. The Twins, I'm positive, won the West. The Mets won the East in the National League, and the Atlanta Braves won the West. Obviously, the Orioles and Mets beat out the Western teams, the Twins, and the, I just said it, Braves with Hank Aaron. But again, beautiful cards here. Tony Oliva, great, great ball player. Okay. And it's Pedro Oliva Lopez, as they say it back. Oh, that was a little comic say. It says Oliva is up again. Tony has led the American League in hits four times. Again, these are really cool. And then this is a really cool one. The Montreal Expos, I think it's 1969 they come into play. La Grande a la Range. They got him from the Houston uh, Colt 45s. Then they were called the Houston Colt 45s. This is Rusty Staub, La Grande a la Range. Rusty Staub. And he just passed away. Was it last year? I think it was last year. One of my favorite players, Rusty Staub. And in 1969, he batted 302 with 29 homers, 79 ribbies, and 26 doubles. La Grande a la Range. He was beloved in Montreal because he got it. He learned to speak French because he went to go play in Canada. And in Montreal, they speak French. And he learned how to speak French. The fans loved him. You see, that's a player who gets it. Like, like um, Aaron Judge gets it. He understands how to interact with the fans. David Price does not get it. Don't care about I, – I wish he'd go away. Thank you for helping us win the World Series. He's just – whatever. Now some more players who get it. And I think we're going to save – I know who we're going to save for last because I think Tabletop Delaware is going to like that one. So this is Willie Stretch McCovey, and that's with the uh, San Francisco Giants. Again, now this is, let's just show you a normal baseball card. I have a funny story. We're just Okay. See the difference? I was trying to explain how big these things were, and people didn't understand. They thought I was crazy. I have a funny story with this one. I'm going to ask you, what celebrity does this guy look like? And this is Greg Gross, but what celebrity? I see, ah, I think right there. What's, what comedian, an actor, comedy, what celebrity does he look like? Greg Gross. And this 1974, uh, 1975, this is a 1975 tops because it's 74 stats in that. But he's not really a great card, but I just, he looked like someone. I asked Nurse Teresa, who's over helping me pull the stuff out. I said, who does he look like? And she goes, he looks like, I go, that's what I was thinking. So, Willie, Willie McCovey, Stretch McCovey. He played um, later on for the Padres. I have some really cool other ones, but so that's Willie Stretch McCovey. Frank Robinson, who just passed away. Again, these are not in mint condition, but they're really cool to look at. I see these cards now. They're all shiny and stuff, but they, they're nice to look at. I enjoy I love all the card collecting channels from WVOGS18, Thriceroni, our good our collectibles. I like that one. Danny N. Gray's and cards and toys. I like that one. Many, many others. They're not these, though. And it has nothing to do with it. It's just you, these freaking – I don't understand like, like all this card's valuable. I mean, again, I don't care about that. I'm like, the guy played three. How is that valuable? I don't get it. This to me is valid. Not in my mind. This this is Frank Robinson. Frank Robinson. Frank Robinson. Jackass playing in Philly gets three hundred million. Three hundred million. He stinks. Mediocre at best. A slightly above mediocre. Bryce Harper. Frank Robinson. 
you know, I don't want to sound like the old guy, but I'm going to sound like the old guy, Frank Robinson. Ball players. And there's many good ball players now, too, except they don't know fundamentals. I watch the Red Sox. They have no clue about fundamentals. They don't know how to run the bases. They don't know. The manager pinch hits for a guy who's hitting three something. And you sit there and you go, I get it. They won the World Series. Everything worked right. Um, this is this year I'm talking about. What they all learned. None of the pitchers can pitch. Their spring training was horrible. Uh, you know. So, And this is for our good friend. Stratomac, Delaware, Willie Stargell, 1969. How cool is that? Willie Pop Stargell. Let me go here. Gonna jet, guys. Uh, all right, thank you. Oh, I hope you saw this card. Oh, I waited too long. Nuts. Well, anyway. That was I was holding it to the end for you, my friend Willie Pop Stargell, the Pirates. I kind of like the Black Pirates. Um, I like both the black and then the yellow and the black. So, Dave Little, Willie McCovey from Mobile, Alabama, nice statue down there. Yeah, he was a. I mean, that's it's just again. So Willie McCovey, we had Frank Robinson, Willie McCovey. There's a guy in Philadelphia making $300 million. I don't begrudge anyone. God bless him. If someone's stupid enough to pay him $300 million, God bless him. I don't begrudge athletes to make their money. I'm just saying Willie McCovey. Okay. I'm saying uh, Frank Robinson. You know, I, I don't know how to hold these for you guys. Hey, these guys are ball players. The guy, the guy got $300 million. Come on. I don't want to hear about Bryce Harper. Fuck him. Pardon my language. He stinks. Mookie Betts ain't worth $300 million either. None of, no one's worth $300 million. If they can get the money, God bless them. I don't care about anyone making their money. I'm just saying, how much money would these guys make? Ted Williams, Joe DiMaggio, Willie Stargell, Frank Robinson. How much money would Dominic DiMaggio make? It's, it's, it's 300 million. The guy, and he wanted an opt out. I give the Philadelphia ownership credit for this. They told him to take a hike. If, he, if, if they go, next time you say you want an opt out, get the hell out of here. We're offering you 300 million. I, I give him credit for that. Amish Elvis. How you doing, my friend? He says, good, mor good early morning, Al, and voice of dice gaming. Well, thank you. Hope all is well, Amish Elvis. I, I played, I, I replayed the, I didn't do it online. Uh, that dice basketball game, I highly recommend. It's fun. And if you're not like me, because I like to sit there and I play everything slow and I look at it and I just enjoy it. It's really fun and there is strategy in it. Uh, you got to know when a guy has foul trouble, you got to get him out because half the points if he fouls out. Fun game. Uh, check that out on my channel. Again, it's like a 10-minute dice game. I did like an hour video, but I was explaining it. And you can probably, I can probably, I'm going to try to, I'm going to, for haha -ha, stream and see how fast I can play that game. So thank you for joining us. The Cubs, the Bears. Fun fact, Frank Robinson and Bill Russell went to high school together. Both were basketball team were on the basketball team in Oakland. That is an awesome fun fact. And again, I I, lo I loved Frank Robinson. I don't, I always liked him. I never met the man. I, something about him I liked. Even when he got mad at the Red Sox. And he managed the Washington Nationals uh when they moved from Montreal, I believe. Yeah. You know, again, I don't care who makes what money, black, white, Latin. I don't care. God bless them all. Make money. They're not better ball players. They're not. They're, they don't have no clue about fundamentals. It's hard to watch. And I love baseball. I don't care how long it goes. And I, I, these idiotic rules that, oh, let's put a guy on set. Shut up. And that ESPN crew on Sunday night sucks. Or Monday night, whenever the hell they're on. They're awful. That woman stinks. Not because she's a woman. It's because she stinks. Yeah, off that whole crew. A-Rod at least. He made so much sense. I've never disliked him. Um, he said the Red Sox had a leadoff double. It's like it's extra innings. They had a leadoff double, Bradley doubles. You have Marco Hernandez at the plate, the one guy in the Red Sox who can bunt. And I was telling the person I'm with, I was over it was Sunday night baseball it was last week. 
I was at Nurse Teresa's house. And I was like, don't bunt on this pitch. He, he thinks you're going to bunt. Don't bunt. Give the guy one swing. So he gets his one swing. It's a 3-1. It's a 3-1 count, right? Not or two to whatever. It's a three and one count. He's gonna groove him a pitch. Put the bunt down. Move the guy to third. Get up there. No, he swings away. He hits it. We were taught as kids, ball hit to the left side, and you're on second base. You stay put. How come a professional player doesn't know that? Jackie Bradley Jr. Again, great defender. He all the time. What the hell's wrong with the Red Sox? Ball hit to the left side. Unless it's hit shallow to the third baseman where he comes in, you keep your ass at second. No, he gets thrown out at third. I'll just make fun of the Red Sox. They're my team. No fundamentals whatsoever. Even the manager. It's a 3-1 count. The guy is going to groove you a fastball. Marco Hernandez, put the bunt down. Move the guy to third. I like that they didn't bunt right off the bat because he's not going to pitch to you. He thinks you're going to bunt. But anyway, it's mind-boggling. So when A-Rod goes... He said, I don't understand baseball today. And he goes, it's not just the Red Sox, it's everyone. And he went through the whole scenario I said. I said, you know what? He agrees with me. J.T. Dutch, how you doing, my friend? He says, hey, Al, how you doing? We're just doing a little, uh, showing some little collectibles. And I'm, I'm showing off some of my old cards. So we're done with those. And our last one, we had a bunch of nice, these are, I got these at a tag sale way back. I think I must have been 14 years old. I found these at a tag sale. Again, not mint condition, but really cool. JT Dutch. I agree 100% about today's baseball and the ESPN commentators. Mendoza is just as bad as the dudes are. Yeah, has nothing to do. She's a woman. Nothing. I'm so, I, I don't care if someone's, oh, no, no, she's horrible. All she talked about how, if you don't like baseball, don't commentate on it. If you don't like, if baseball is too long, don't watch it. I don't, don't watch it. That's fine. Don't watch it. I don't want a runner starting on second base in the 10th inning. That's the stupidest effing thing. It's not the world baseball classic. Okay. I understand why they do that stupid rule there. Okay. I, I don't like it there either. I enjoy the world bas baseball classic. It's just stupid. Call the game. You know what? That's like when Howard Corsell hated boxing. I was like, stop. And thank God he quit calling boxing back then. Stop. No one tells you to call boxing. You suck that in any way. You know, just. Come on. I, I never thought I'd want Joe Morgan back. And, and I thought when Joe Morgan first started, I liked him a lot with, um, God, I can't think, the bald guy. The, 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 uh, I liked him a lot. Then Joe Morgan got, he got grumpy. He got grumpy. And he rub you the wrong way. Uh, but I'd rather have them back, you know. So All right. So that's pretty cool. Um. She doesn't bring anything, JT, nothing, except annoys me. I don't watch baseball on ESPN. I don't want, I don't, even the guys just talk baseball. I don't want to know about everything. They, I watched, they, they did not talk about the game and it's like two outs had gone by and they're babbling on about, oh, how they should make the game. Do, do, we're watching this game, right? Tell me, I, I get it. I'm watching the game, but I want a little something from you guys, you know, it's horrible. I, I, you know, I want to see my announcers. And I don't like the Reds. I like Eckersley. I like Remy. The other guy from ESPN who they got, he's okay. I liked Orsillo much better. I like funniness. I thought him and Remy were awesome. Um, in the day, I used to like uh, uh, Ralph Kiner for the Mets and Tim McCarver when he was a Mets announcer. He got a little grumpy when he became a national announcer. So, uh, JT Dutch. Uh, same thing like Jake. Mariznik and the collision with John LaCroix. Who takes the inside lane on a ball hit to right field? Completely ridiculous. It's, it's just stupid. Again, you, you know, that's, I didn't see that, but I agree. It's just, it, 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 there's nothing wrong with baseball except here's, here's what they should do for baseball. Here's what they, we're, we're gonna, I'll show you some, this is a long stream, people. I'd already said it. I'm, it's Friday, tough work week. I'm enjoying, I went and found all my old collectible stuff. I'm enjoying, so long stream. John Milner, thank you. I'd rather have John Milner and Joe Morgan back. I really would. I, I never just liked John Miller. I liked Joe Morgan in the beginning. He got grumpy. That's what happens sometimes with athletes. I mean, I get grumpy. Everyone gets grumpy. Um, what they need to do with baseball is you get in the batter's box, right? You stay in the batter's box. You're up on the mound. You throw the damn ball. Very simple. The rules are – my friend umps games. He umps high school, little league, legion ball. 
Next year, he'll be up in, I think, some local college. Those are rules in the book already. You get in the batter's box. You stay in the batter's box. Now, if something's in your eye, yada, 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 I get that. Okay. But you, you, have, to, you have to do that. Okay. It, it's just stupid. There's nothing wrong with baseball. Nothing. It goes long. There's no clock. I don't want a clock. I don't want, I don't want to limit how many times you can change a pitcher. I don't want any of that. I don't want them. Listen, if a team wants to put all nine players on the left side, you know what I say? Hit the ball to the right side when he makes a mistake. Throws an outside pitch, smack it the other way. I don't care. I don't want all these, oh, we need to make rules so they outlaw the shift. No, hit the ball the other way. Or if you're that good, hit it through the shift. Everyone's whining. I mean, I'm whining now, but I'm not whining about the game. I love baseball. I And I, I don't like the way it's played now. That's the problem. I don't like the way it's played. Everyone, you know, you can't go hard into second, but yet what's his face wipes out Pedroia and there's nothing done about it. And again, I'm not a PD fan. I think he's an a-hole. Okay. When he threw his teammates under the bus, when they threw, when they threw at um, Machado. Oh, I didn't make it. Get out of here, PD. I would have traded him. I hate guys like that. Weasel. 1967. Look it up. The Yankees, Red Sox, they threw at Joy Foy's head three times. I talk about it. We've put the link in the chat. You know what the Red Sox did? Jim Lombard, boom, he hits the pitcher, right? And then the brawl's on. I'm not saying to get in a fight. I'm just saying, Dustin Pedroia, go away. God bless you, go away. He's hurt, retired, do whatever you want. I can't stand guys like that. He, You know, whatever you think of Bobby Valentine when he got hired, he was the manager. You guys played like crap. You got your manager fired, okay? And then you're going to be like, blah, 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 blah. No, that's not the way it works. What Bobby said, no matter how much everyone doesn't like him, he was correct. He might have been nutty in the way he said it. He was correct. Euclid was done. You guys ran the bases like crap. You didn't feel the ball well. You know, whatever. Whiners. Whiners. Anyhow, back to collectibles. That's my little rant on baseball. And I love baseball. Amish Elvis. Bob Euchre could listen to him. Oh, yeah, Bob Euchre was good. I like Bob Euchre. There's a lot of good baseball guys still, you know, old school. But All right. Um, these are some fun. Um, I'm just going to pull some of these out here. And we'll do a random team. Kind of set up. This is a random box. Then we're going to go back to... Oh, I did it. Okay. So the question was, <laughs> I don't know how good you can see it. What comedian actor does this, does Greg Gross look like? It's tough to, I don't know. What, what, I mean, he looks like someone. I don't know if you guys even know who I'm thinking of. Obviously, probably not. Old school, really old school. So, but he, he looks, and I'll, I'll tell you in a moment. I'll tell you in a moment. This is a cool card. These are some really cool cards. W boxes. Bob Costas and Jim Cott do MLB Network games sometimes. I like Jim Cott. Jim Cott should be in the Hall of Fame. For the wins he has as a pitcher, I know he pitched a long time. That means he was pretty good. I'm so sick of him. He pitched a long time. And the gold gloves at pitcher should be in the Hall of Fame. Just my opinion. Um, JT touch. Yeah. Valentine was made a scapegoat for an awful season in Boston. Absolutely. Here's the thing. Bobby gets hired. I was happy. I saw the way he managed the Mets. He had his type of players. He had his own, he had his coaches. He could uh, uh, hire when he came to Boston. They told him you can hire one coach. How do you do that to the guy? How do you, he hired one coach. So he had one friend and the rest of the coaches were either hired by above him or were leftovers from the prior regime. They didn't like him, okay? Dustin Pedroia on the first day, or I think it was the first or second day of spring training, complained about it. Shut up, Petey. Shut up. Adrian Gonzalez used to constantly go to the ownership, oh, blah, 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 blah. Shut up. I was so happy when we had Adrian Gonzalez when the trade, and then as soon as he opened his mouth, I wanted him out. I don't want guys like that. I don't want guys like that. That's just my opinion. Great ball player. When you have a guy whining that you play too many Sunday night games, go away. You play Sunday night games in Boston and New York because you're good. That's why you play on Sunday nights or in L.A. 
but he, you know, whatever. Thank you, Magic Johnson, for taking those numb nuts off the Red Sox. I love Magic Johnson. The Cubs, the Bears. Cop was a great hitter and fielder also. He is in my Hall of Fame. Absolutely. And you bring up, yeah, he was a good hitting pitcher. I didn't even bring that up. I, I just, I don't understand people. I don't. Oh, he's not. He, he played a long time. If you play a long time, that means you're good. He, he accumulated stats. Yeah, I, I get that. I understand that. Yeah, and what? Well, at the end, he was a relief pitcher. I get that, too. And what? Uh, multiple gold gloves. Over 10. I know that. 10, 12, 16, some ridiculous number at pitcher. What do you think? It's easy to feel that pitcher? It's not. The ball comes back at you really quick. Uh, 200. Is it 280 wins, 270 wins? A lot of wins, a lot of wins. And then he played on sucky Twins teams after. He was a very good pitcher in the 60s, uh, from 66, 65, 66 to like, because the Twins won the division with Bobby, the one year Billy Martin managed them. And they lost to Baltimore, I think, 1971. They lose to Baltimore, 70. So, who's your least favorite Red Sox major league player of all time? Least favorite. I can tell you I don't like David Price. I don't like him at all. Thank you for helping us win the World Series. I'm happy he did that. I wish he'd keep his mouth shut. He brings up stuff that happened, before, you know, whatever. He's a baby. I don't like David Price. He's not my least favorite. I, I, I don't wish him bad. Because I think the media takes cheap shots at him too, but he falls for the bait all the time, and he wants to, you know, say stuff. So whatever, God bless him, whatever. Uh, he's not my uh, my least favorite Red Sox. I didn't like Will Cadero. He hit his wife with a telephone, so I I would have cut him immediately. I would have cut him immediately. They end up getting rid of him, but they took him a little while. I didn't like Will Cadero. That's the first one that jumps in my mind. Will Cadero. He beat his wife with a phone. Yeah, don't like him. Don't like him. I, I don't. I also don't like the theory of players aren't choir boys. I don't want my player. They don't have to be choir boys, but they don't. They have to be okay. You know, I've already said it. I, Aaron Judge gets it. I don't know the man personally. I've never Derek Jeter. You never hear a bad thing about. He gets it. You know, um, there's lots of players like that. Those are my types of players. I know I named two Yankees. Uh, Carly Stremski. Now, there's some people saying, you know, tr the lack of uh, camaraderie with some of those teams. But you didn't hear it. You know, that's not a horrible thing. I wish there was camaraderie. You know, they used to do the 25 cab, 25 players, 25 cabs. Uh, but, yeah, Will Cordero pops in my head. He beat his wife with a phone. Uh, get out. Gone. Bye. You see that in football. It makes me laugh. Oh, the guy. Bye. Gone. And they, they, and they go, oh, you don't need choir boys to win. You can win with good people. You can win. It's been done. It's been done. I'm not saying everyone's a choir boy. I'm just saying it has been done. Like college teams do it all the time. I get rid of the You can find someone else. Get rid of them. Whatever. White, black, Hispanic, I don't care. They, they, they're beating up someone. They're, they're doing drugs. Get rid of them. Bye. Bye. I don't care how well you throw a football. I don't care. I don't care. Don't care. Bye. But they don't do that. Sad. You should root for the good guys. People laugh at me. I root for Tim Tebow. I want Tim Tebow to make the majors. Oh, he sucks. Maybe he's not major league ready. He's playing double A ball, triple A ball. Good athlete. They should give him an opportunity better in uh, NFL. He was a different type of quarterback. Let him just play his game. You could win with him. You can win with him. You put him in the right. Cleveland should have got him in the, when they needed a quarterback. They're too stupid. Oh, we don't want the headaches. What? Because he's a nice guy and he believes in God? That bothers you? Wow, you have a rape, you know, Pittsburgh quarterback. Didn't seem to bother anyone with that, right? Pittsburgh quarterback, never mind. Well, he's lucky he's not in jail. <laughs> and people don't like Tim Tebow because he's nice. Mind-boggling to me. But that's just the world we live in, you know. It's funny. It's sad, actually. Also had a lot of uh, success in Japan. First foreign manager uh, went in. Yeah, Bobby Valentine. Just again, I get it. He he says crazy things. It's a whole PC baby culture. Sam's Tangled Web. There is a great channel right here. Good friends with comics with Bueller. 
Please check them out and subscribe to the comic book channel. Sam, you weren't here earlier. I, I have some comics. I'm just going to show you a quick one. This was one of my all-time favorite comics. Read the crap out of it as a kid. World War II. Anyway, I have a few more, but we already went through that. No one wants to see those again. Anyway, some baseball cards. and uh, I'm having a lot of fun with this stream. Love this card. This is a Topps. My God, I can't read this. Don't get old, people. I can't even tell you what year it is, but it's in the early 80s. <laughs> 83. Nolan Ryan. Really cool card. Again, I apologize. I don't know how to... I think that you can see that. Like that. Nolan Ryan. My, my camera doesn't zoom in. So that's Nolan Ryan. Super veteran. They show him as a rookie with the Mets. Another stupid trade the Mets made. And uh, he's with the Astros then. So that's a cool card. I love these cards. Do they still have team cards? I love these cards. Team cards. Where they'd have all the teams, the teams sitting down. And this is the Astros. And the manager was, I never heard of him, Preston Gomez, 1974 stats. So... 1975 tops card and it's a little beat up in back but still I, I like i like um i love the team cards and here's another astros team card i really like the astros team card or team cards in general i don't do they still have team cards just curious i don't collect anymore um as i drop my cards on the floor and i bang my knee oh well uh, all right i'll uh, sip a coffee J.R. Richard, health. He would have been an all-time great. Uh, he had a stroke. Uh, what year did he have a stroke? J.R. Richard, this is his 1980 card, so it's 81 tops. Uh, J.R. Richard started, was a starting pitcher in the 1980 All-Star game. He was 10 and 4. This could have been the year he had the stroke, possibly. J.R. Richard, great card, in my opinion. Then we have a lot of the Express, Nolan Ryan. This is an 81 highlight card. He pitches his fifth career no hitter. Nolan Ryan. You know how you know how he got good? He pitched. You, you let pitchers pitch. Shocking. When he was with the Rangers, his philosophy that was let if the pitcher's tired, he should tell you he's tired. If the pitcher's fine, he pitches. Uh, another argument I get into my friends' discussion. I, I'm not gonna say argument. Billy Martin with the A's. Oh, he ruined the pitching staff. Do you know his relievers? He had one decent guy out of the bullpen. They were not going to win if they, he didn't pitch, if he didn't do what he did. His job is to win. Okay. I get it. Those guys threw a gazillion innings. They also won 20 games. They also won a half division. And if you put the, the season together, they would have won the division. And they beat the Royals in the playoffs. And they would lose to the Yankees in the American League Championship. And they stunk until Billy Martin got there. So I don't want to hear. Hello, Moni G. Educator extraordinaire, Moni G. So Sam says, I used to have some old baseball, uh, bas basketball, NBA cards. Well, Sam, let me just show you something real quick. Uh, we got some Dave Collins cards. Uh, you weren't here earlier. Uh, and these are really cool. These are really uh these are one. I don't know. One year they were really just big cards. These are, and again, that's Dave Collins. He was a center for the Celtics in the seventies, Hall of Famer. Compared to Derek Harper, kind of cool. Both nice looking cards. Derek Harper, very good player, also. But Dave Collins, kind of cool. And uh, you were in here earlier, and these are two Dave Collins cards. So that's Dave Collins, and this is Al Red Sox fan at the Rocky Marciano dinner with Dave Collins when I was a young man. That's kind of cool. All right, so back to some baseball cards. And all right, so now we have the old man of baseball. I always liked, I have him on my uh, mythical Red Sox team and out of the ballpark. Phil Negro. Cool card with the Braves. 
And these are kind of cool. I don't know if they do these anymore. Batting and pitching leaders. That's Dale Murphy and Phil Neeper. I like that one. Moni G says, Wow, Al, I dig the fancy stream with the words too cool. Moni G, Shaka Khan. Rock on, Shaka Khan. Yes, we can. Yes, we can, Will. We will do that after. We can do that one before we do the movie one or after. <gasps> I do have a Sparky Anderson. Oh, crap. It's in one of those boxes because they had manager's cards. I think I have a Sparky Anderson. Amish Elvis. Love Phil Necro. Knuckleball is underrated. Absolutely. Another Phil Necro card. Okay, Necro's in the Hall of Fame. Another Phil Necro card, uh, 1970. Se okay, 75 tops because it's 74 stats. L I like these cards. I love the, uh, I, I don't know, some people don't like the color on the outside. I like them. Another Phil Necro card. So I have quite a few Phil Necro cards. Then Dale Murphy, good player, very good player. Dale Murphy. W Vox 18, my local card store owner bought Phil Necro's whole collection. Wow. His personal baseball card collection? That's pretty cool. Dale Murphy. So which uniforms? Do you remember these? Um, which uniforms do you like better? Where is it? I can't find it. Dale Murphy. And another Dale Murphy. These are the old school. These were kind of uh, these were different. These were like kind of like the Astros uniforms of the seventies. You know the multiple colors. This was a little different. I kind of liked it. it. Was a little different. It was a little cool. Different. Uh, was it? It was a little different, but it wasn't like uh, overbearing to me. So those are kind of cool uniforms. I still prefer. I still kind of like these a little better. The mono colors. That's just me. Now, here's, uh, I took some cards from all these teams, uh, what I thought were cool cards, players I liked. Will, uh, Willie Stretch McCovey. This is 1979, so this is an 80 tops card. He's coming in to the end of a career. He ended with, went back, he was with the A's. So he came back to the Giants. This is after he... He had left the Giants, went to the Padres, played with the A's briefly, which I didn't know that. That's interesting. Only 11 games in 76 with the A's, then back to the Giants. So that's kind of cool. JD touches. I didn't like the Candy Stripe Braves jerseys with the red. Oh, that's uh, that was – yeah, I showed that one. I think that was one of Dale Murphy's. Yeah, They're different. You know, they're kind of like ha-ha to look at. I, uh, I think uh, this one – Again, different in the day, really 70s-ish. Wait till we get the Padres uniforms. I thought this was cool. Um, I, I'm not saying I'm a Dave Kingman fan. I guess he was an a-hole. I don't know him. He could be a nice guy. But Ken Castro was a sports writer who actually covered him. He could be, a, you know. But this is with the Giants, Dave Kingman. I thought that was a cool card. Bobby Mercer. I pulled this one out because I thought it was cool. At one time, thought to be the heir apparent to Mickey Mantle for the Yankees, Bobby Mercer. Okay. Vita Blue. I'm trying to figure out how to. Oh, that's not right. All Star, National League All Star. Got a couple of those. Another one. Another Vita Blue. This is cool. Jim Marshall really had a dominant year in 1974 for the Dodgers. Out of the bullpen, he, he threw in 106 games. And this is what they call a highlight card. Uh, Mike Marshall, not Jim Marshall. That's a football player. Mike Marshall. Okay, I'll read you this. Uh, base, this was an extra card in the set. 
Uh, baseball extra. Mike Marshall hurls in 106 games in season. Mike Marshall tonight set an all-time mark by hurling in 106 in his 106th game of the season. He established another mark with 208 innings, 208 innings in relief. Both totals breaking his own record he set during the 1973 season while with Montreal. Mike Marshall. I have a couple of these. These are I, I thought these were cool. When I I, remember, I was you know I looked at all my cards. I said, let me pull those out. That's cool. Davey Lopes, 1975 record breaker. Most consecutive successful stolen bases, 38 in a row. From Rhode Island, state of Rhode Island, Davey Lopes. Does that work better? Okay. And then this is Mike Marshall's real card from 74, which is 75 tops. I think we'll end it after this set of cards unless anyone wants to stay. Steve Garvey, good player, very good player. Hello, Alan Shaw. How are you? Our good friend from across the pond. Oh, that's Moni. Hold on. He says, hi, guys. Hope all is well, Alan. Now back to Moni. What team had the rainbow? Oh, the, the Astros, Houston Astros had the rainbow. Uh, I got a couple of Fernando. Oh, only one. I thought I had two. Fernando. And in 1982, 19 and 13 with a 287. That's a year after the strike. 81 was a strike. Another Steve Garvey All Star. Fringe Hall of Famer, Steve Garvey. Steve Garvey again, All Star. Keith Hernandez. I had a, some Keith Hernandez cards. I thought they were. Solid player. He won the MVP in 79. He shared it. I forgot who he shared it with. Keith Hernandez with the Cardinals. I didn't have one with the – well, I have sets. I have like six six or eight sets of years, which I know I have all the players. These are like when I collected. So it's you just buy packs. So I thought it would be cool to go through, and I pulled out. Again, Keith Hernandez. And here, Ozzie Smith, Hall of Famer. I have him also with the Padres. Uh, JT Touch. The Astros started with the rainbow look in 1975. It was so unique, they wore the same jerseys at home and on the road. That That is a good piece of information. Thank you, JT, JT Dutch. And that answers Moni G's question. Captain Carl helps me out. He says, uh, I went brain dead. Keith Hernandez, <laughs> uh, MVP. Co-MVP with Willie Stargell. Thank you, my friend, Captain Carl. Moni says hello to the captain. And again, I like I like these. I like the team photo cards. Again, do they still have team photo cards? I thought I had some Bob Gibson cards. I I, I might have traded them away when I was a kid because I was stupid. Um, but this is this is a good one. Another highlight. 1974, which is 75 top. Gibson throws his three thousandths. 3,000th strikeout. Bob Gibson achieves 3,000 career strikeouts tonight. Bob Gibson became the first National League pitcher to break 3,000 career strikeout barrier, uh, striking out Cincinnati's Cesar Geronimo. Walter Johnson holds a lifetime mark of 3,508 strikeouts. Bob is second on the all-time list. Great pitcher, Bob Gibson. Played on some bad teams uh, after the Cardinals had their heydays in the 60s. Cardinals were not very good in the 70s. Nowhere near as good as they were in the 60s. Uh, Cincinnati Reds, man, uh, team card. Again, I really like these. Then we have Tom Seaver with the Reds. His health is failing, unfortunately. Tom Seaver. Got a couple of Tom Seavers. Yeah, I believe so, Will Boggs. That was in 74, so. Another Tom Seaver. Johnny Bench is probably considered by a lot of people the greatest catcher of all time, all-around catcher. Got a few Johnny Benches. Well, and I thought, I like, I like, I always like George Foster, when he, especially when he's with the Mets. 
George Foster All-Star. George Foster, oops, sorry. I started to turn it the wrong way. All-Star, oh, I think that works good like that. Okay. I, uh, Captain Carl said something. My brother got me an autograph ball of Bob Gibson. I keep it with my autograph ball by Johnny Pesky. Cool. Will Vogg says, uh, isn't the strikeout leader now Ryan? Amish Elvis says, over 5,000, I believe, for Ryan. Yeah. Again, that was 1974. So that was 3,000 with Bob Gibson. So, yes. Moni G, Johnny Bench, great man, great name for a ball player. Thank you, Amish Elvis, for your help there. Greatly appreciate it. Joe Morgan, Hall of Fame, second baseman. And if you were here earlier, we showed the sticker book with him with the Giants. He also played with Oakland. You got Philadelphia team card. Another Philadelphia team card. Uh, Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame, in my opinion. All-time hits leader. You can put band from baseball. That's fine. Baseball operation. That's my opinion. Mike Schmidt. Hall of Fame third baseman. Got a few Mike Schmitz. Mike Schmidt. That's 75, 75 top 74 season that they're showing the stats. Um, 1981 tops. Mike Schmidt. Lefty Steve Carlton. This is a 1979 tops because it shows a 78 season. Alan Shaw, here's a question. Who is the ugliest player to play baseball? Uh, he was a pitcher. Moss, I believe was his last name. He pitched for Detroit and some other teams. Moss, not a good-looking man. Not a good-looking man. It's only a face a mother could love. And I'm sure he was a wonderful person. That's my vote. Oh, they had some old school guys who were pretty fugly looking too. Good question. JT Dutch. If the 1976 Reds had Tom Seaver, I think they would have been the best team of all time. They didn't get Seaver until 77, though. You are correct. Mets trading them. I still say the 75 team's better because they hit the ball better. That's just my opinion. They never had dominant pitching. I mean, if you look at their pitching, it was good. It was Sparky playing the bullpen. I've played so many of those seasons just like you have. I mean, What's your opinion on their pitching? It's not. It's good. It's not outstanding. It's not like they have 20-game winners. It's not like the Orioles pitching in the 70s, which was insane in the early 70s. Alan Shaw was thinking Willie McGee. Look up that guy Moss. Don Mossy. Don Moss, something like that. There it is right here. Don Mossy. Look him up. And also look up some of the old school uh, Black Sox, White Sox, 1919. Not a, they're not as attractive as in the movie Eight Men Out. Don Mossy, yeah, he, he was a bit unique looking. The Reds could have had Vida Blue if MLB said so. Yeah, they nixed the trade, right? Just like the Red Sox could have had Joe Rudy and Raleigh Fingers. There's actually a famous photo. They're in, they're in uniform. And they get the call that the trade's been nixed because they uh, Charlie Finley traded them for money because he wanted to sign free agents the next year. And he was trading his players for money, which MLB should have just stayed the hell out of it. He needed money to sign free agents. Uh, okay. Uh, Steve Carlton. And this is an 81 highlight. Carlton. Sets a new National League strikeout record. Montreal, Quebec, September 21st, 1981. Phillies lefty Steve Carlton tonight became the National League's all-time strikeout leader. He fanned 12 batters in the game, raising his career total to 3,128 whips. The former mark was 3,117 Ks by Bob Gibson of the Cardinals, 1959-1975. That's Bob Gibson. Another Carlton card, all-star card, 1979, so it's 1980 card. Steve Carlton, another tops. Then Tug McGraw, 
Uh, pretty good reliever. Father of the country singer, whatever the hell that guy is. And he passed away. That was sad. He had brain cancer a few years back. What's the McGraw um, country singer? I, I, don't, I don't I can't. I don't know. Travis. No. What the hell is his name? Now? Another Tug McGraw. This is Moni G was asking about Sparky Anderson, but that's Joe Torrey when he managed the Mets. Uh, he was a player manager. What year was that? Maybe he wasn't player manager yet. Nope, 75. He was a player manager. My faux pas was not. I don't think he was player manager in 75. In 77, he was. Will Vogg says, Tim McGraw, thank you. That was Tug McGraw, that uh, son. Alan Shaw still thinks Willie McGee. I don't know. Don Mossy's pretty fugly. Lee Mazzilli. How much did I like Lee Mazzilli? I'm going to show you how much I like Lee Mazzilli. This should uh, give you guys a big laugh. Hold on a second. Where is it? Folks, where is it? Where is it? Someday. Where are you, Lee Mazzilli? Oh, I also found, you guys remember? That's a super ball. You bounce this, this bounces over a house, this freaking thing. I don't know. I'm going to try it uh, tomorrow. <laughs> Super Bowl. Where's my lead? Oh. You remember Diggum? I don't know why I collected this thing, but I must have got it out of cereal. I hated that cereal, but I like the frog. And I can't find what I was looking for. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. All right. I had a Lee Mazzilli pen. Anyway, this is a really cool picture. It's one of my favorite baseball cards. When I saw this, I just brought back a lot of memories. Um, again, I, I, I like George Foster, especially with the Mets. And I just thought this was a really cool card when I was a kid. I still like it. Brings a smile to my face. Uh, I like George Foster. Uh, here's Kong with the Mets. Second second time he was with the Mets because he was with the Mets prior, left, and went back. So he came up with the Giants, went to the Mets in 75, was traded in 77, played briefly. In 1977, now we got the card. We got the card, okay? Dave Kingman. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you the question, then you guys can take a guess. I thought he played for more teams than that in 77. Okay. Well, I was wrong. Anyway, he played for four teams. I thought it was five. But he started off with the Mets, Padres, Angels. He ended with the Yankees. He played in eight games with the Yankees. He was on the World Series roster, though, because he went right at the end. I don't know if he got a ring for that. Dave King. Kong. La Grande, a la Ronde, Rusty Staub, one of my all-time, as I already stated, all-time favorite baseball players, La Grande, a la Ronde. I have him on my Red Sox mythical team, 1973. La Grande, a la Ronde, Rusty Staub. We also have him. And our big um, tops cards from 1969. When he played for Montreal. And that's where he got his name, La Grande, a la Ronde. He learned to speak French. I already told you that. He got it. He wanted to endear himself to his fan base. Shocking a player wanted to endear himself to the fan base. Ooh, no, I already showed that one. A few more. These are for Chris from Stramac, Delaware. He already left. Willie Pop Stargell. And we got Dave Parker, the Cobra. Another Parker card. Got quite a few Parker All-Star cards. Another Dave Parker. And again, if you weren't with us earlier, we have Willie Stargell. And 
in our big top set. That I, again, I got these at a uh, tag sale. I think I was 14 years old. Again, they're not in great condition, but it's they're really cool. Cool is cool, you know. Now, these are some of the all-time ugliest uniforms ever. San Diego Padres. These are kind of 70s-ish. And that's Ozzie Smith. Doesn't look like him, does it? Now, the, the, the Cardinals and Padres swapped shortstops. The, uh, Templeton from the Cardinals went to San Diego for Ozzie Smith. And people, uh, bad trade. We both good shorts. As he's in the Hall of Fame, and at the time I think they thought Templeton was a better hitter. Probably was at the time, but great glove, and he hit better as he went on with his career. Ozzy Smith, and here's Willie McCovey with the Padres. Again, so that's Willie McCovey with the Padres after the Giants. So here's. So we have Willie McCovey, Giants, Padres. Uh, I don't know what, um, I think that's. Let's see. Fair Fawcett, Charlie's Angels cards. Found those two. Couldn't find my jaw. I don't think I have my Jaws cards, like I said, or Happy Days cards. Dave Winfield. Got quite a few of these. Hall of Famer. Dave Winfield. He's in the Hall of Yeah, he's in the Hall of Dave Winfield Padres. 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 Got him with the Yankees, too. I don't know if I have them. I probably have them with Toronto because, I, like I said, I have about eight full sets where I bought. That wasn't fun. I did that for obviously eight years, or close to eight years. It just wasn't fun. You walked in, you bought a full set, and you're like, okay, I got them all. Cool. It wasn't the same. It wasn't that fun. It wasn't the same. But you had all the cards. One time I bought the cards, I went home because I always would check, and they pulled out a bunch of good. I went back, I said, you pulled out good cards, man. Where's my Roger Clemens card? You telling me he's not in the set? Give me my Roger Clemens card. Give me this card. Give me that card. I never. I think that was the last time I bought. I never went back there. So why would you pull those cards out, jackass? Raleigh Fingers, Mister Mustache. That's when he's with the Padres. He went his last year with Oakland was 1976, and 77 he's with the Padres until 80. But he is not on the World Series team. Because Goose Gossage was the closer there. He would go to Milwaukee. He was on that World Series team that lost to um, the Cardinals. Montreal. I, I always like these uniforms, the Expos. You're, I, I like these uniforms a lot. Again, it's funny because I said I don't like multiple colors, but this one I liked. And that's the Hawk, Andre Dawson. Start off with the Expos. We have Andre. And then we have Tim Raines. The Rock. Love these uniforms. Let's go to the chat real quick. Who eats the bubble gum? My brother uh, gave, gave me his. I used to, that was gross. And it would suck because if it was on a good card, it ruined the card. But I chewed that piece of wood bubble gum. I ate it. You don't eat it, you chew it. So, good question. Amish, Amish Elvis, probably one of the most gifted athletes, Winfield. Absolutely. Uh, you could have played basketball. You could have played football. So, absolutely. Great point. <laughs> Alan Shaw is still obsessed with the ugliest player in baseball. <laughs> His vote went to Willie McGee. I believe myself and JT Dutch went with Don Mossy. Again, no knock against any of them, but they were fugly. JT Dutch. By 1984, I think Fingers was with the Brewers or out of baseball. Yeah, was he with the World Series team, though? Because 
Maybe he wasn't. Again, the card stops at the, the, the year of it, so. But he's not on, he's not on, I don't think he's on that World Series. I don't think, maybe he is. I don't think he's on, yeah, I don't think he's on the 84 team. I agree with you there. I don't think he's on that 84 team. They were great players, Alan Shaw says. Don Mossy was a solid player, solid pitcher. Then we have uh, Gary Carter, who would go on to play with the Mets and was on that team. You know that team we're not going to talk about? Never happened. Never happened. Gary Carter. Andre Dawson again. I like these. This is a cool card. Um, batting and pitching leaders. I don't know if they have these anywhere. That's Al Oliver. Again, uh, one of my favorite non-Red Sox players. On uh, one of my seasons, I traded to get Al Oliver <laughs> for the Red Sox when I play open world. And Steve Rogers was actually a really good pitcher. I didn't pull any of his cards. I have quite a few of those. I got doubles of that. So. Oh, okay. Another Andre Dawson. And then Jeff Reardon went on to pitch with the Red Sox. Trying to figure out how to hold these. Oh, that looks okay. Hold it like that. Jeff Reardon. JD Touch. Uh, Raleigh was injured during the 82 World Series. Okay. I don't, I don't recall him playing in it. That's why. I, but I'm like, I think he was on that team. And then Captain Carl Fingers was with Milwaukee in 84. Oh, yeah. Moni G says, I love the classic Tigers home whites uh, with the old English D. Yeah, oh, yeah. Beautiful. You know what, Moni G? Um, do I have? Did I pull any? I have a lot of them. Um, I don't have any Tigers here. I just realized those are all National Leaguers. These are all are these all National League cards? Yep. Okay. Well, for you, Moni, and I don't know if the Cubs and Bears are still here. Um, we got lots of Cubs cards coming up. Uh, we got some Expos still. So let's just do go through the Expos real quick. Again, same players, just different years. You can see, and I'm going to pull some Tigers cards for you, Moni. I gotta do this. I look here and I gotta do this. I gotta look here. Tim Raines, All Star. See, when I look at the screen, it looks blurry, so I can't tell if it's blurry for you guys. But anyway, probably getting you seasick going. Woo -woo -woo. So we have some more Dawson. Go quick, Dawson. Good stuff. Andre Dawson. Gary Carter. This is fun. These are fun. Um, these were future stars. So it's Tim Raines, Roberto Ramos, and Bobby Pitt. So at least they hit on Raines. The other guys, not so much. Future stars. I, again, I like the I like the the team cards. I like the team cards. Expos team cards. And Gene Mock actually managed the Expos. I did not know that until I looked at this card. And Dick Williams managed the Expos. Former manager of the Red Sox '67, Oakland A's manager. I got quite a few of the Expos team cards, which are to me really. I keep saying it, but they're neat. They're cool. I like them. I like team cards. And then we have, again, Tim Raines and Gary Carter. And again, future stars. So on this future stars, and I, my, my camera doesn't like focus in. I apologize for that. Terry Francona, who was a pretty good, then he hurt his knee. Brad Mills, who becomes Terry Francona's bench coach with the Red Sox. And Brian Smith. All right. So we have some Cubs cards, and then we'll pull a Detroit. We'll pull the Detroit team random cards, and we'll see who we have for Detroit. I think I have a couple of Mark the Bird Fidrichs. We might have a Sparky Anderson card. And that's for Moni G. So I'm going to put this down for a second. This is just a card. I think I cut this out, but it's Ernie Banks, and I didn't care when I was a kid. 
It's Ernie Banks. It's Ernie Banks. Ernie Banks, Mr. Cub. Freaking awesome to me. Then I have quite a few Buckner cards. He just passed away. God rest his soul. Bill Buckner. Okay, Bill Buckner. Uh, they're just different years. So that was... This is an 83 card. Tops. All these cards, the majority of them all tops. Actually, they're pretty much all tops. That's all I collected. This is an 82 Bill Buckner for the Cubs. Eighty one Bill Buckner for the Cubs. Eighty one card, which means the eighty season. And I have some Bruce Suiters. I have a Bruce Suter. Hall of Famer. Closer. Cubs. Another Kong, Dave Kingman. Who's an all-star? 1980, so it's an 81 tops. Cubs 1974. Uh, so it's a 75 tops. Another Cubs. I don't like this. Uh, this one. I don't like this one so much. I don't like the, with just the headshots. And a couple more Bruce Suiters. Bruce Suter. And these are just random cards I picked out. That Hall of Famers or potential Hall of Famers or should be in the Hall or close to the Hall. Bruce Suter. Uh, 1980. It's because it's a 79 stats and back. So 1980 Bruce Suter card. Tops. Bill Madlock, all star rookie. So he was a rookie in 74. No. Yes. Wow. He played for the Pittsfield. He played in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. I did not know that. Pittsfield, Mass. And this is his rookie year. Bill Madlock. I have two of those, as you can see. So that's kind of, Now this is a little fun thing. I thought this would be another Bill Madlock card. And that is a 1977 because it's 1976 stats on the back. All right, before we go to Detroit, because I'm a, I have a 12-year-old's mentality. Dick Tidrow, followed by... You guessed it. Oh, God. I'm not doing that right. All right. Let's do it again. <laughs> Dick Tidrow, followed by Pete Lacock. It's my 12 year old. It's funny. Dick Tidrow, Pete Lacock. Get the job. Come on, people. Laugh. <laughs> All right. So that's that. Let's put those over here. All right, let's find it. Detroit, Detroit, Detroit. I have Detroit right over here. Oh, what do we got here? It's not that. Here it is, Detroit. Okay. These are just random cards I had in. They're all Tiger cards from random sets I bought when I was a kid. There might be some other ones. But. Oh, so has anyone figured out who, again, to me, he looks like Don Knotts. This is Greg Gross, rookie all-star. And I think he looks like Don Knotts. He was a pretty solid player, Greg Gross. Let's put him over there as that's our Don Knotts. All right, Detroit. These are all Detroit Tiger cards. That's John Walkenfuss. I just like saying the name. John Walkenfuss. So many funny jokes I can make with that name. But not gender appropriate we're, we're, we're sort of family friendly I only dropped one f-bomb right so John Walkenfuss he played a lot of different positions adequate not really you know good utility player hit for decent average 274 again um, yeah two his career average at the time in 1980, 260. So that's John Walkenfuss, Detroit Tiger. Oh, the bird. He died way too young. Mark the Bird Fidrich. Uh, 1980, he was two and three, got hurt again. But his rookie year, I might have that somewhere. I don't think so, but I might. I, I thought I had that. It's not in any of these boxes, but 
Mark Vidrich, rookie of the year, 19 and 9 with a 2.34 earned run average. Then he was 6 and 4 and 77. 78, he was 2 and 0 and he hurt his arm again. 79, he was 0 and 3. 1980, he was 2 and 3. But again, he hurt his arm or he got injured. Mark the Bird Fidrich. Then the Red Sox signed him. And I, when I was a kid, I was like, we're going to win the World Series. We got the Bird. Never made it out of the minors. He was all done. Then he died on his farm in Massachusetts trying to fix his truck. I believe the thing fell on him. Jack Morris. For Moni G, again. Moni G wanted to see some tigers. And she likes, there's the classic. That's what she's talking about, the, the D on the cap. Again, very classic look, the tigers, the home, okay? La Grande Alarange. Bit chewed up the card, but it's Rusty style. Who cares? Ron Jackson. Again, you get a good look at that D that uh, Moni G likes so much. Rick Peters. Again, nothing special there. Alan Trammell, good card. Tom Brookings. Steve Kemp. <laughs> all hit or all miss, Steve Kemp. I remember when he was on the Yankees, I used to joke and call him Team DH. Yep, Jack Morris was a good pitcher. Ron LaFleur. And from the Red Sox, Ben Ogilvie. Moni G's happy. She likes all the Tigers. We're going to go through them, Moni G. And then I'm going to go through the Yankees for our good friend, Sports Time Machine. Check out that wonderful channel. I got to finish off the wonderful baseball game he was doing. I was listening at work. So please check out our good friend, Sports Time Machine. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Lots of Strat baseball on there. That's Mr. Utah Mike. So back to the Detroit Tigers. A very young Kirk Gibson. He's battling Parkinson's disease now. We wish him the best. Enos Cabell. <laughs> Vern Rule. He had control issues. I think he was the dude who would throw the ball up on the screen. I, I think he actually did that against the Red Sox. Right, it's six in my head. Mickey Lolich, the hero of the 1968 uh, World Series. I believe he won three World Series games. Mickey Lolich, not Danny McLean. Mickey Lolich. Not a big fan of Danny McLean's. Aurelio Lopez, love his hair. Was really Dan Petrie was a pitcher. Solid pitcher. Lance Parrish, one of the better catchers in the day during that time period. I don't know which if it's better to go like this. I don't think so. Like that. Again, it doesn't zoom in. I don't know how to do that. So Jack Morris, all-star. Tom Verizer, pretty solid glove, shortstop, middle infielder, shortstop. Gary Sutherland, nothing to write home about. Again, these are all random packs that I bought when I was a kid. I just put all the teams, the same teams together. Mark Wagner, another shortstop. Got to love the hair there, Mr. Wagner. Phil Minkowski. Mankowitzki, Phil, we'll just call him Phil. Third baseman, Tigers. Uh, Mick Kelleher, again, nothing special. Rick Peters, the other ones I had pulled, I was like, oh, they're good. Dan, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Chat that are Dave Tobeck. Ooh, I do have Lou Whitaker. Sweet Lou Whitaker, partners in crime with Alan Trammell. Al Collins, pretty – Al Collins, good player. Played also with the Royals. Um, actually came up with the Royals. I'm looking at the back of the card now. 
Al Collins. Dave Rosema. Pitcher. Another Alan Trammell. Uh, we already saw this is a repeat. I keep counting. Name's appropriate. Kevin Saucier. He looks like he's on the sauce. I don't know, man. I'm just saying. He looks a little... Yeah. He looks like, please walk the straight line, sir. Bill Fahey. Was he a catcher? Yep. You could just tell. He had that catcher's look, and it says catcher. <laughs> Dan Petrie. Solid pitcher. Larry Herndon was a solid ball player for the Tigers. Larry Herndon. Another same. That's a repeat of Lance Parrish. Jason Thompson. Aurelio Lopez. I never heard of John Knox. Let's just see what he did. Yeah, that's why. He's a, pretty much a utility third base kind of guy. Didn't play much. John Hiller was a closer at one time. Alex Johnson. This is a cool pitcher just because I like the Fu Manchu. Willie Horton was a big hero in the 1968 Tigers. Love the Fu Manchu, Willie Horton. Bill Freehand, a leftover from the 68 Tigers, coming to an end of an illustrious career. Woody Fryman, pitcher. Milk Wilcox, sort of a dirty name. 12-year-old in the again. Dave Lamanska, yeah, whatever. Good luck with that. Jack Billingham came over from the Reds. So this is 1979, Jack Billingham. Dave Roberts. That's one of those trade cards. Luke Walker. Another Dan Petrie. Aurelio Lopez. My God, how many Jason Thompsons do I have? Parrish. Mark Wagner. So, again, nothing outstanding here. Um, Alan Trammell's probably the best cards. Um, I'm not seeing any real good action cards. Like Mickey Stanley, uh, he played on the 68 team. So, we have some older players from the 68 team. Ben Ogilvy, I like that card. Came over from the Red Sox. Dick Sharon. <laughs> John, Johnny Walkenfuss. Johnny walking for people. Our good friend Thrice of Roni, a card collecting treat. He says, just got home from a nine-hour drive from Colorado Springs. I come home to Al streaming late. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you're home and safe and hope all is well. Our good friend Thrice of Roni, a card collecting treat. Will Vogg says hello to Thrice Roni. Sports Time Machines, Action PC, and Strap Memories with Cards. Awesome. Love the 75 set. Yes, the 75 set are the cards that look like this, The nineteen because it has the 1974 stats. I do love these cards. I agree with uh, Mr. Utah Mike. That's uh, Sports Time Machine. And I apologize. I don't know how to zoom in on it. I've tried. It doesn't work. I don't know how. The mic works good. I'm excited about that. I don't have to wear the headphones when I don't want. So that's that. We'll get some more Ben Oglevies. Let me see if there's a... I think we might have a Sparky Anderson. Well, you can kind of see Sparky there. Let's go back because Moni G is a Tigers fan. Sweet Lou, she said. You can kind of see Sparky Anderson up top, Moni, in the managers. Uh, in the in the uh, These are the uh, team cards, which I really like a lot. Again, I'm covering myself up. But that's okay. But I think I might have one. Uh, Jim Nettles, not Greg Nettles. I'm just looking. Ron LaFleur. This is a nice card. Ron LaFleur. Is, I think this is a nice card. He had some substance abuse issues. They did a uh, TV movie on him. LeVar Burton played him. Again, is it like that? Should I hold it like that? Yeah. Ron LaFleur. Another team card, except this is with Ralph Hawk as the manager. He went from the Yankees to the Tigers. Might have been in between. Then he went to the Red Sox at the end to manage Ralph Hulk. Another team card. I really do like these team cards. Uh, Thrice Cerrone or Will Vaughn, do they still have team cards? Freehand. Mickey Lolich. Good card. Again, here are the 68 World Series. Mickey Lolich. 
Um, all good. Ooh, La Grande Alarange. And this is the uh, Sports Extra 1975. La Grande Alarange goes to the Motor City. See, I told you they called them La Grande Alarange. I'm not making that stuff up. La Grande Alarange. The Detroit Tigers have acquired slugger Rusty Staub from the New York Mets. Stupid trade by the Mets. In a four-player trade announced today, Staub is coming off his most productive season with 105 ribbies in 1975 and is expected to rattle the right field fences in Detroit with line drives throughout the 76 campaign. So they're trying to build up a good team. And so then we got the bird again, Massachusetts native, Mark the Bird Fidrich. Named the American League Rookie of the Year in 1976. Pitched two innings in the 76 All-Star Game. Played in Philadelphia. And again, injury prone. Worcester, Massachusetts, he was born in. Just down the road. That's what it says here. I thought he lived somewhere else, though. His farm was not in Worcester. Born August 14th, 1954. Worcester, Massachusetts. The bird. The bird, bird, bird. The bird is the word. The bird, bird, bird. Struck out, I think it was 19. Was it 19 Yankees on Monday Night Baseball? It wasn't even supposed to be that game. The other game, the national game, got rained out, and they went to that game. Because Warner Wolf calls the game. And I don't think... Okay, that's it for that. So let's go to the Yankees, and I think we'll call it a stream. Unless there's a team someone wants to see, we'll do it. I'm having fun with this. Pulled out my old cards and collectibles. Got so many more at some point to show you guys, but that was kind of fun. So that was for Moni G. I hope you enjoyed that, Moni. A Leo like me. All right. Okay, let's put these over here. Oop, don't drop them. Yankees. Where are the Yankees? Next to the Red Sox. That's where they are. Okay. Now, um, let's see. Well, we'll probably show you the Red Sox after that. Here are the Yankees. Ooh, I got some, ooh, why are they over here? Oh, no, those were fell out. Okay, so we got some decent Yankee cards. Got some decent Yankee cards. This, are, this is for our good friend, Mr. Utah Mike. He is a Yankees fan. The Gator, Ron Guidry. This is, oh, these were the action cards. These were something new. They didn't put, uh, on these cards, there were no stats on the back. I can't see the year because I don't have my glasses on. But they just tell you uh, highlights. So Ron Guidry, the Gator. The Goose. So they, they had a regular card and then they had an action card. Goose Gossage, action card. And then you got Dave Winfield with the Yankees as the boss, Mr. George Steinbrenner would call him Mr. May, because he never hit in the one postseason he was with the Yankees, one or two on him. Dave Winfield. And, that, and this is his night. So this is an 82 card, 1981 season. 81. Yeah, and they lost in the World Series to the Dodgers. And that's when he got his Mr. May, because he didn't play well in the World Series or in the playoffs. I don't know. So the first year at the Yankees from the Padres, that was a huge signing. And the man who took over after for Thurman, Mun I thought I had a Munson card somewhere, but I don't. Could be in a different box. Rick Cerrone came over from the uh, Blue Jays. Started off with the Indians, played a few games with them. It's a pretty good card, Catfish Hunter. 17 and 15 and 76. So this is a 77 card, Catfish Hunter. I don't like these type of cards. He passed away from Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, God rest his soul. I don't like, I like, I, I really do like the action cards. Uh, Rudy May was a serviceable starter for the Yankees. 
I apologize. I still am not I'm gonna get used to like where the hell to put the card. Jim Spencer would late, would then go on. No, he came from the White Sox. Jim Spencer. So he went. He was with the White Sox in '77, and baseball demo is doing that replay uh, stratomatic. Then he went to the Yankees. He's on the 78 team. Eric Soderholm, I forgot about him. He also came over from the uh, White Sox a little later. Johnny Oates was a catcher. These are random cards. Uh, I have full sets. We'll show you different teams now and then with those. They're not as fun. Like I said, buying full sets was like, Okay, I bought the full set. Yay. Sparky Lyle, closer on the 77 team, and he was with Gossage in the bullpen in 78. One of the stupidest trades the Red Sox made. Danny Cater for Sparky Lyle. Red Sox. <laughs> Another Gator, Ron Guidry. Alan Shaw says, got to go. Uh, my father-in-law, see his father later, guys. Thank you very much, Alan. Take care. Our good friend, Alan Shaw, from across the pond. Moni G says, I dig the Yankee pinstripes. Cool. Ed Figueroa was a serviceable pitcher. Came over from the Angels, I'm pretty sure. Yep, Angels. He's on the 76 Yankees, 77 Yankees, 78 Yankees. So in 1976, 19 and 10. 1977, 16, and 11. In 1978, 20, and 9. And then in 1979, not so bueno. Must have got hurt. 4 and 6. Only 16 games. Ron Davis came over from the Twins. Or did he go to the Twins after? No, he went to the Twins after. Ron Davis. Bullpen guy. He could throw hard. He could throw hard. I have I, I gotta make sure I have this Oscar Gamble card. Where is it? Please let me have this Oscar Gamble card. It's somewhere. I've seen it. Uh nuts. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, is it not with the Yankees? Maybe it's with a different team. Could be with the Indians. God. Oh, nope. I got it. Oscar Gamble. Look at the fro. And I think they got him from the White Sox. Okay. Yankees take Gamble on Oscar. The Yankees made a move to bolster their outfield depth when they acquired Oscar Gamble. Oh, from the Indians. And the Cleveland Indians in exchange for right-handed Pat Dobson, a strong left-handed hitter, Oscar, was used frequently as a designated hitter by the tribe and will add punch to the New York Yankee lineup. Again, look at the fro. That's awesome. Oscar Gamble. The fro. Trying to see where it focuses in. Anyway. Why did he not pitch in the 77 World Series? Who's that? Ed Figueroa? Maybe he was hurt. I don't know. I don't know. If you're talking about Ed Figueroa, he could have been hurt. It's a good question. Probably was hurt if he didn't pitch. So then this, then they made Oscar Gamble get a haircut. <laughs> a few years later, big difference. Uh, Michelle Elvis, if I could grow a fro, I would definitely have one. Oh, yeah. I'd have an Oscar Gamble fro. Will Vogs is back. Cool. I'm going to be going. It's, it's it's almost to the end. I'm not tired, but it's almost 3 a.m. So let's go to 3 a.m. and call it quits. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Someone look up why. Okay, let's go back to his card. We're going to quickly go through that. Ed Figueroa. Where is Ed? Ed, 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 Ed. I just saw Ed. 
So in 19, again, question is, why didn't he pitch in the 77 World Series? Someone go to baseball reference, see if he, but I'll take Mr. Utah Mike's word. He's a big Yankee fan that he did not pitch in that World Series. In 1977, 16 and 11, 76, 19 and 10, and in 1978, 29. He definitely pitched in the 78 World Series. Dave Gardner, almost 3 a.m. What are you still doing up? I have lots of cards to go through. Did you see the fro? We got to show Dave Gardner the fro. Dave, this froze for you. Oscar Gamble, the fro. The bro with the fro. I got to put that card on top just in case we got to show it again. Nature called. Oh, you and Dave says he's got that card. Cool. I think I have one with Cleveland too. So John Mayberry. Again, these are random cards. These aren't sets. Again, I bought sets later on and. You know, when I started collecting, not as much fun. I have full sets. We're going to pull teams out eventually and just that. And uh, Willie Randolph. And then this guy, Bucky Dent. That's enough of that. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, I know the Yankees like to look at Bucky Dent. It sort of makes them a little, little gives them that feeling, you know, that feeling. Gives me a feeling too. Millbourne. I always liked Lou Pinella, sweet Lou, loved him as a manager. How is StreamYard? Uh, it's good. I think I'm gonna get the uh, gonna try keep trying a little more different things. I'm not gonna stream games on this because I still can't get the sound. I'm doing something wrong. I thank you that you sent me that message, Dave. It's still. I'm going to still stream games on OBS, but this I like. There's a lot of things I can do with it much quicker than I can do with OBS. Um, I might get the $60 version to try that out just to see. Because I, I, if you get this, you can get rid of the, this part up here, powered by uh, SteamYard. You can put your own logo up there if you want, but I'll see. I do like it. I do think eventually it's not going to be free, which is fine. I think it's a really nice function. Um, it works well. I like that you can change things up quite quickly. I'm still learning it. Thank you very much, Dave, for finding it. Thank you, Ron, Uncle Ron Juckett, also, who uh, asked some questions. And they're very responsive, so that's cool, the people who run uh, StreamYard. I, I, I did. I thought I did that last night. Obviously, I didn't do that correctly. So we'll see. I, I, I like... Um, because I want to do some like dual broadcast like you and Uncle Ron do. I actually wanted to have all, I wanted to have you and Uncle Ron on uh, when I do a, uh, I was going to do a Giants Buccaneers game. And I'd like to have you guys on do that. All right. So we'll go um, Jerry Mumphrey, pretty good player. Yeah. Willie Randolph. Reggie Jackson. Got some Reggie Jackson. I actually have his 1973 Oakland A's card when he was MVP. Not in real good shape, but I have. I thought I had a 74 card, uh, but I don't. Ooh, so. Another Reggie Jackson. All-star. Ron Guidry. I love this card. 1978 record breaker. And it is... American League record, most strikeouts, left-hander, nine-inning game. He struck out 18. That was a record for left-handers. Ted Sizemore has the worst card, if I remember. I have a gazillion Mike Tyson cards. With the Cardinals and the Cubs, it's hilarious. Again, Sparky Lyle traded for Danny Cater. Stupid trade. Again, Lyle, not a very good closer. Could have helped out the Red Sox, you know. 
wasn't a dominant. It was a good closer. It was a good closer. But Danny Cater, really, Danny Cater at the end of his career. That's like when we traded Cecil Cooper away for George the Boomer Scott to get the Boomer back. Now, he had one good year. Cooper went on to have many good years. Joe Lefevre became a manager, I believe. Jim Mason, I don't know. This is just bad hair to me. Bad hair. I mean, do something with that. That's just bad hair. I don't know. Oscar Gamble, not as frolicious. Another, and I got some Dave Winfield. Now, I like these again. I think Dave Dave uh, Gardner would a kick out of his next card. I like these future star cards because they don't hit on any. It's pretty funny. I was looking at them all going, yeah, those guys were never uh, that good. Sports Time Machine said, always hated Jim Wolford crazed smile card. I have that. I have a Jim Wolford card. Anyway, so this is a Yankee. New York, uh, New York Yankees future stars. Steve Balboni is okay. He actually played better with the Royals. Not a future star. Andy McGaffigan, not really. And Andre Robertson, okay. Future stars card. Another Reggie Jackson. The straw that stirred the drink. Uh, Larry Milborn. Bob Watson. He played one year with the Red Sox, and they went to the Yankees. The Bull. Another, his nickname was The Bull also, Bob Watson. I wish the thing would zoom in so you could see the picture. I don't know if it's better to go like this. No, it looks better like that. Dave Reverend, they got him from the A's. I remember that. I've always wanted an old Reggie Jackson cars. I don't have a Reggie Jackson cars. I know what you mean, cars. I think I have two. You can have one. I think I have two of the same. Pretty sure. Ooh, ah, fudge. If I have two, we can... Let's see. All right, Al's dropping cards all over the freaking place. All right, we'll have to go back and look after. I thought I had two of the same as I was going through. Okay, we got Willie Randolph. We already showed Willie. Here's an interesting story behind this card. Jim Beatty, who the Red Sox pounded the crap out. We, they sent The Yankees sent him back down to the minors. He actually would pitch in a World Series game that year. 1978, he was 6-9 and nine with a 3-7-3. My God, he'd be a $10 million pitcher with a 3-7-3 in this day and age. Take care, my friend. Thank you for stopping by, Mr. Gardner. If I have doubles, I will. If I have double the same card, I will. I'll send you one. It's got to be the same card. Rick Cerrone, Gamble, Gamble, Winfield, trying to look at Mike Morgan. Bobby Mercer, this is when he came back to the Yankees after he was with the Cubs and Giants, Giants and Cubs. Again, once thought the heir apparent to Mickey Mantle. Shane Raleigh came over from the – oh, wow, I have two of those cards. Shane Raleigh came over from um, Cincinnati Red. No, the Mariners. Why do you think it was with the Reds? It was Ron. And the Gamble Fro card, again. Doc Ellis came over from the Pirates. I don't think he stayed too long with the Yankees. Ken Brett, brother of George Brett, pitched for the Red Sox. George Frazier, Mickey Mantle when he comes over from the Angels. Aurelio Lopez, former Tiger. Juan Benitez, Fred Chicken Stanley. That's what his nickname was. Chris Shambliss, that's a cool card. Indians got rid of a lot of good ball players. I don't that's why they sucked. 
Dictidro. Goose Gossage. Pat Dobson. Here, I think we showed a Pat Dobson card. Mel Stoudemire. That was kind of a... He was a good pitcher, but he came about when the Yankees were not any bueno anymore. He pitched in the 64 World Series pretty well, and then the Yankees stunk. Jim Cott. I forgot he pitched for the Yankees. Again, I feel he should be in the Hall of Fame. Jim Cott. That's kind of a cool card. I forgot Jim Cott pitched for the Yankees. George Medich. Ken Holtzman. Pitch for the Cubs and the A's. Solid pitcher. Went to the Yankees. I forgot Larry Gura. Pitch for the I remembered him with the Royals. But he also pitched with the Yankees. Another Pat Dobson card. Elliot Maddox. Alex Johnson. I don't remember him. Brian Doyle. Brother of Denny Doyle. He played for the Red Sox. He played a big part in the 78 World Series because Randolph was hurt and play much. Sandy Alomar. Go on to manage. Sandy Alomar. And this is the Ed Figueroa talking about the trade. Figueroa, Ed Figueroa comes to the Yankees in a swap. The Yankees today acquired right-hander Ed Figueroa from the California Angels along with outfielder Mickey Rivers in exchange for outfielder Bobby Bonds and fireballer. The fireballer uh, Figueroa had a mark of 16-11 and 11 for the Angels in 75 with a 2.90 earned run average, striking out 139 in 245 innings. So they traded away Bobby Bonds, that's the father of Barry, and they got Ed Figueroa and Mickey Rivers. Chris Shambliss, nice card. I, I really, again, I don't. I he had the hat on, so that's cool. I, I don't. I like when there's a little more action. Rudy May, Willie Randolph. I think they got him. Yep, Pittsburgh for Ken Brett and Doc Ellis. So Doc Ellis did not play long. They sent Doc Ellis back to Pittsburgh. Oh wait, wait, no, I messed that up. I'm sorry, my faux pas. Let me do this again. They actually got Doc Ellis and Ken Brett from Pittsburgh along with Willie Randolph. Scouts agree that Willie Randolph has all the qualifications to be a superstar in the majors. Yankees agreed with this evaluation by dealing pitcher George Medich to the Pittsburgh Pirates to get Randolph plus pitchers Ken Brett and Doc. Wow, they, they robbed them. Wow, they got three guys for a, that guy? And again, it's just now we see the same kind of card except for Doc Ellis. Doyle, Cerrone, Soderholm. And these are all doubles. Stottlemyre. Oh, Yankee future stars. Tim Lawler, Bruce Robinson, and Dennis Wirth. Tim Lawler is an okay pitcher. No future stars there. And we'll end with... My beloved Boston Red Sox. First, let me look to see if I have a double here. I'm just looking. I might have a double the same Jackson card. Just joining us, we're just going through. I, I pulled out some old cards. See all these card collecting channels. I kind of like what look at the cards. So I got old cards. Sentimental, that, that's one Reggie, that's two Reggies, different years though. It's three Reggies, different years. No, not looking good, W Vox. No, I don't have no doubles. Wait, wait, wait. Nope. I might have uh, in another box, so there's still hope. If I have a double of a cert of one year, I'll send you one. Uh,
All right, and one last set of cards. You might have to. You could have a Jackson in there somewhere. All right, and uh, we will end with the Boston Red Sox random cards through sets I bought through the years as a kid. Not a lot of great cards in this, but they're my Red Sox. So I, love I got lots of Bill Campbell cards, Jesus. All right, here we go. And we go down the stretch. This is it. The last one. Red Sox. It was a lot of fun showing you this. We got a lot more to show at some point in time. I just felt like showing some cards, talking a little baseball, and just stuff. So let's go here. Captain Carl says, Figaro did not pitch in the 77 World Series because in his start during the American League Championship Series, Figaro pulled was pulled by Martin after three and a third inning, allowing four runs. Martin didn't put him on the roster. Wow. That's Billy Martin. But they won the World Series. He had a feeling. Martin passed Figueroa over in 1977 World Series, believing that the pitcher had not yet recovered from a nerve from nerve damage in his right index finger. Figueroa disputed this. Thank you for the info. Mr. Captain Carl. Uh, Sports Time Machine is going to replay the series, and he didn't pitch. I was like, what the heck? I'm 51 and just noticed this. Sometimes that happens. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, this is for Captain Carl, as he is a Red Sox fan. Again, not a, got Mario Guerrero, utility player, shortstop. I got a couple of Mario Guerreros. He went on to go play with the Angels. Was well liked on the Red Sox. Jim Rice, that's a good card. That's a good card. Let's put that one. Bob Watson, the one year he was with the Red Sox, went to the Yankees the next year. I met this guy at one of our little baseball functions when I was a kid. Larry Wolf. I think it was Larry Wolf. Yeah, it was Larry. I think it was Larry Wolf. Or I don't think it was Jack Rohammer. I think it was Larry Wolf. Butch Hobson, Captain Error at third. Dick Drago. Juan Beniquez. Bill Lee. Well, this is what I wanted to show you. The 77, the 78 cards were the 77 uh, stats. But on the back, you could play a game. Uh, it had right here a little game. And if you had all the cards, you, you, you kind of like shuffled them. It was like a little strap baseball game, except not really. It was just random cards. And for Bill Lee, it's his play ball. Played by two. That's what the game was called. And if you played this card, if you flipped it, it was a ground out. It says ground out over, uh, over, because I can't. Uh, over here, ground out. Can't really see that, but there's a little game right here. I wanted to show you that. That was kind of cool. We used to fool around and do that. Ruin the cards, mind you. And we're just enjoying it. Rick Wise. Serviceable pitcher. Not outstanding. Serviceable. Mike Torres. Came up with the Cardinals in 1967. Three games in 67, three games, uh, five games in 68. My God, I got uh, Gary Allenson, lots of Gary Allenson cards. Bill Soup Campbell, his best year was 77 with the Red Sox, then he hurt his arm. Though he pitched much longer than I thought. Another Bill Campbell, another Gary Allenson. And Uncle Ron's favorite, Bob Stanley. Dwight Evans, Bill Campbell, the Rem Dog, Jerry Remy. That's a nice, I like that. That's a good card. Good action. 
Tony Perez. This is when he came from the Expos after starting with the Reds. Tony Perez played a few years. It's okay with the Red Sox. Not like the same Tony Perez with the Reds. Another Bill Campbell, different year. Fergie Jenkins comes to the Red Sox. Really didn't do what they thought he was going to do. Alan Ripley, I hate this card. I've always hated this card. It just looks like a looks like Art Garfunkel for God's sakes. Ugh. Frank Duffy, nineteen seventy eight Red Sox. Ugh. Rick Miller had a couple of stints with the Red Sox. I got ink on this card, as you can see. Serviceable, very serviceable ball player. Another dirty name in, in, in Dick Pohl. Goes with Pete Lecoq and Dick Tidro. Uh, juvenile in me. John Tudor. I always wondered what would happen if they had kept John Tudor. I think they traded him to Pittsburgh. I think they got Mike Easler the hit dog. I think. Future stars. Bruce Hurst, Keith Mack Werder, and Reed Nichols. Reed Nichols, okay outfielder. Bruce Hurst was pretty good. Solid pitcher. Not too bad there with futures. Not stars, but a solid pitcher and an okay outfielder. Three, you know, could play. Reed could really play anywhere in the outfield. Left and center, most of the big play. Same card. Uh, I, again, I like these cards. Team cards. Tom Bergmeier, nothing special, but was a reliever. Now, we got some decent Carlton Fisk cards, Hall of Famer. Carlton Fisk, one. Love this card. It's beat up, but one of my favorite cards. I love action cards. That's one of the best cards ever. And that's a Yankees tanking out, hopefully. He's waiting for the ball to come in. Fisk. This was on the back of a hostess, the hostess boxes. I cut that out, Carlton Fisk. Not a good job of cutting, but and this card got ripped. But another Carlton Fisk card. Jim Rice, different year. This is, I think, this is a double. I think we already showed this one. Jim Rice, <laughs> one of my few non-tops card, and the only reason why my I, I took it for my friend, he had doubles. It's Freddie Lynn. I think this is a flare. Is this a flare? Uh, what brand? Donruss. This is a Donruss. I only usually collected tops. But I took it. It was Freddie Lynn. My friend gave it to me. Freddie Lynn. All-star card. Again, I, I'm not, I'm not fine. I don't like when they not, when they don't, I don't really care for these type of cards. I like it. It's Freddie Lynn, but I don't like when there's no hat on. I, I just don't like it. Freddie Lynn. He always said if he stayed in Boston, he thought he would have been a Hall of Famer. Loved playing in Boston. It was never really the same after he hurt his shoulder uh, when he banged it in the wall. Freddie Lynn. A little chewed up, but it's Fred Lynn. My God, more Gary Allenson cards. I'll just show you. My God, Gary Allenson, Gary Allenson, Gary Allenson. Good God, I always got Gary. How? My God. Lots of Gary Allensons. So this, I got him in this one year, and I have him four times because there's another one I didn't show you. Same, same. Four freaking times. Different year, Gary Allenson. Gary Allenson. The Rooster, Rick Burleson. He would go on to play for the Angels. Rick Burleson. Rick Wise. The Human Error Machine at third in 1978. Butch Hopson. Uh, it's 1980 card because it's 1978 stats. This is Butch Hopson, 1978. God awful at third. But he had chips. He had, his elbow was not good, so they kept playing him. Butch Hopson. I like this one. Good action. Carly Stremski. A couple of those. Louis Tiant, 1972, is 15 and 6, 1.91 earned run average. El Tiante. I also have a card last season with two cards, uh, the Angels. That was cool to look at. Dwight Evans. Dwight Evans. 
<laughs> Dennis Eckersley never wore the freaking hat. Dennis Eckersley, 1978, 20 and 8 with a 299. Bob Watson, the man we traded Sparky Lyle for, Danny Cater. What did Danny Cater hit in 1974 for the Red Sox? 247. You know what? 1973 hit 313 long. One decent year at the Red Sox. I still would rather have Sparky Lyle. Another Juan Benitez. Ooh, Mike Andrew. 1968. I got that in a garage thing, too. You got beat up, but I was a kid. Doug Raider, cup of coffee with the Red Sox. Dave Raider. Doug Raider was a different player. Bob Montgomery seemed like he was Fisk's forever backup. There was one year, um, 1975, he did play 62 games now. I don't remember this guy at all. Terry Hughes, was a pitcher. Was he a pitcher? No, third base, sorry. I don't remember him at all. Poodle dude, Ted Sizemore. Kind of looks like a little bit like Jerry Remy. Cup of coffee with the Red Sox. 26 games in 79. Rob Wolf. Jim Dwyer, who kind of looks like Jastrzemski in that picture. Dick Drago again. Same. Bill Soup Campbell. I wish I had a 77 card. In 78, I mean, in 77, he was outstanding. 13 and 9. They don't give you saves on the old cards, but he had a lot of saves. 2.96 earner and average. 2.96 earner and average. In 78, 3.88, 7 and 5. And again, they don't give you the saves on those cards. But he wasn't the same. He had a B pitch with the Cardinals, though, like up in the 80, up till 85. Bill Campbell. Bill Campbell. I don't like when they don't wear the hats. Bill Campbell. Denny Doyle. We saw his brother. Brian with the Yankees, Steve Renko, and Tommy Harper. Now, again, if you just joined us, this is Tommy Harper with the Red Sox. And then the mega big card with the, with the Pilots. Uh, 1970 card because it's a 69 season. These were a special set, I think. And that's with the Red Sox in 19. Uh, this is a 75 card, 1974 stats. So it's kind of cool. I love. I got these big cards in the day. At, again, at a tax sale down the street from my house. The Boomer, George Scott. Last 77 was really his last good year in baseball. He actually went to the Yankees after. In 70, another Captain Carl Ustremski. Bernie Carbo hit the homer in game six to tie the world to tie the game, and then Fisk would hit the game winner in extras. Gary Hancock, the aforementioned Jack Brohammer. Dave Stapleton had a really oh, this is another this is another uh Donruss, so I must have got that from my friend, Dave Stapleton. They were a little sharper looking. I still didn't like them. My God, another Gary Allenson, Jim Dwyer. Ooh, nice Tony Perez card. Another Jim Rice card. Rick Miller. This is his second time he was with the Red Sox. Because he left the Red Sox in 77, played for the Angels in 78, 79, 80, and went back to the Red Sox in 81. Very, very good ball player, Rick Miller. Could play all three outfield positions. Hit pretty decent. Evans again. Carney Lansford won a batting title with the Red Sox, I believe. If I'm almost positive. They got him from the Angels. He would go over, he would play with the A's after. Yep. I think this is the year. 336, 1981. The strike year. Glenn Hoffman had a good rookie year. Never panned out after. Played a long time. He ended, I think he ended his career with the Dodgers. Jerry Remy, the Rem Dog, no hat. Wade Boggs, got quite a few Wade Boggs cards in my sets downstairs. This is his rookie year. Added 349, 
in a, in 104 games, 338 at bats. He was a first baseman, third baseman, would eventually just become a third baseman. So that is a Wade Boggs rookie card, folks. Tops. Good card. And once again, Bob Stanley for Uncle Ron Jackett. 1978 actually was not bad for Bob Stanley. 15 and 2, and he had some saves. His ERA, 2.60. And I was wrong. Icarus Lee with the hat. There's that high leg kick the Eck would have. Yeah. 200 wins, 200 saves. Hall of Famer, Dennis Eckers Lee. John Tudor, different year. Bergmeier, we showed you. Oh, God. Mark Clear. He sucked out of the bullpen, I swear to God. Was Perez still a good player with the Red Sox? He was okay. Uh, these cards are bent. Luis Aponte. Bobby Ojeda, who had much more success with the Mets. And they're kind of bent. And Rich Gedman, Worcester, Massachusetts. Maybe. Let's look at Tony Perez real quick. Again, he's a few cards back. Birdmeyer. Pickersley Stanley. Boggs rookie card. That's a real good one, to be honest with you. Hoffman. Lansford batting title that year. Miller, Rice. Here's Tony Perez. Okay, let's look at Tony Perez. Tony, my, look how he played a lot of years. See how small that is? <laughs> Going to old man mode now. And I, I got to, yeah, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Okay, let's see if we can. Uh, 1980, first year at the Red Sox, batted 275, then 252, then 260. Home runs, 25 his first year at the Red Sox, then 9 and 6. 100, his first year, 25 homers, 105 ribbies. Then it looked like he was hurt. 84 games, 69 games. So the first year was really very, pretty, oh, over 100 ribbies. That's very good in my book. Shit. That gets you $300 million in this day and age. Well over that. Hell, look at Bryce Harper. So that's it, folks. That's the Red Sox. Uh, is there any last thing I'd like to show you? Oh, one thing. And, I'll, and if we do a chat with Al today, later. Um... Uh, I always like these. I used to buy these books in school. Greatest sports photos. Um, where's the one? Yeah. I always like this one. I think this is Frank Robinson <laughs> yelling at the umpire. And, and then you can see the football. They're, that's They're shoveling the snow to look for the first down marker. Pete Rose. But what I want to show the OG, one with this. This is a game I bought when I was 12. I was trying to figure it out. And I talked to him about this, and it's, I have all the pieces. So we might take a crack at this at some point. Panzer Army Africa. Rommel. So it's not a bad shape. Okay. Anyhow, that is it, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. We showed you some cards. We had a lot of fun. Uh, we went three hours and 28 minutes. It was a lot of fun. So thank you, everyone. Health and happiness. Until next time, take care. Bye bye. God bless. And we just showed you some collectibles. We have other collectibles we will show you at a later date, which is something different I felt like doing. I pulled a lot of these cards out. I like to think, excuse me. I like to thank uh, Nurse Teresa who came over and helped me pull out. She thought we we're going to have a fun date night, and we pulled out cards from the cellar <laughs> and pizza. It was fun. So, 
All right. Health and happiness. Next time, take care. Bye-bye. God bless you. You know what's coming, folks. Peace. Love you all. FOC for life.